Satya, are you going to record this Zoom or you, you don't want to record this? It will be on YouTube. It will be, It'll be there on YouTube. Okay. Fair, fair enough. I can start. Okay. Okay. So, welcome everybody. Uh, we did that, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, tribute, uh, we thought of organizing this tribute for uh, Professor Sandeep Prabhasa uh, at somewhat short notice. So, we probably couldn't get to all the people who we might have otherwise uh, contacted. Uh, nevertheless, I think even now the number is not too small. Uh, so, uh, let me begin by saying the uh, the program is as follows. Um, uh, there will be brief presentations of about 10 minutes each. Uh, Professor Vernon Barger, I don't know how this is exactly pronounced, Barger or Barger, okay. Uh, he, uh, I mean, uh, he has sent a video which will be uh, played by Satya. Uh, then after that, uh, we'll have Rohini Godbole, John, uh, Subendra, Nava, Professor Rajshekaran and Jaksi. Uh, each speaking for about 10 minutes, uh, followed by shorter uh, remembrances by Basudev Dasgupta. Amitabh Datta, incidentally, is not well, so he has conveyed his regrets. Uh, Shubhavati Goswami, Anjan Joshipura, Govindo Majumdar, and Rahul Sinha. And after that, of course, it'll, uh, whoever would like to say a few words can do so. We uh, plan to roughly close this meeting at around 12 o'clock because it will be also late for uh, some of you in various parts of the world. So, 12 uh, noon is when we propose to close. So, let me just briefly uh, you know, uh, uh, say something about the uh, uh, brief bio of uh, Professor Sandeep Prakasa. He was born in uh, 1935, December 24th. Uh, he was brought up in Mumbai. So, uh, he did his BSc, MSc in uh, university, which is uh, probably not that well known outside of India. The Maharaja Saijira Gaikwad University, MS University as it is known as. It was then called Baroda, now it's called uh, Vadodara, like many of these cities' names have slightly changed. Uh, this is the same university where uh, uh, this, uh, what is it, uh, Venki Ramkrishnan uh, did his <laughs> undergraduate study. Uh, uh, okay, then he followed this up with a PhD at Purdue, where he had a thesis, uh, his thesis advisor was uh, Professor Rosen a postdoc at Syracuse, and then finally he went to the University of Hawaii, where he was for many, many years, for uh, what, this looks like almost 50 years. Uh, uh, he so-called retired in 2013, but apparently he was still associated with the department and was very active uh, research-wise, uh, even, in fact, during the COVID period. Of course, there are several awards, recognitions that he got in his long career, uh, and some of them are listed here. Uh, the JSPS, APS Fellow, Regents Medal, Jubilee Lecturer, the Cultivation of Science in Kutata, Alexander von Humboldt, Breakthrough Prize, who was part of the Kamland collaboration and played a very significant role as a, uh, one of the leading theorists in that uh, collaboration. Of course, he had collaborators all over the world. Uh, he would also, I mean, including uh, India, and he, had, uh, he used to visit India quite often. In fact, he was the only overseas INO collaborator. Uh, we hope to change that, uh, hopefully, when the project, uh, you know, as we progress on the project. Uh, and of course, he passed away, as you all know, uh, about three weeks ago, 24th of uh, September at Hawaii. Uh, his uh, work areas will, of course, be covered by the uh, speakers in the following uh, uh, you know, talks and pre presentations. Uh, so, especially his work in the areas of CP violation, the park sector, neutrino physics, they will all be touched upon. But I'd like to quote from some talks that he gave several years ago or five years ago in. Uh, India, I think he visited many uh, places in India and uh, gave this talk. Uh, it was a pedagogical talk, but uh, stern gerlach experiment and the non-discovery of uh, the electron spin. Uh, so, this, uh, I, I just quote from his uh, uh, talk. Uh, so, he says, my takeaway from Stern's career, it's okay to have theorists as friends. Even be familiar with what they are talking about, but don't take them too seriously. Certainly don't pay too much attention to their advice. And above all, any experiment that can be done is worth doing. Recently, I discovered a similar cautionary remark by an ex-DG of CERN about the dangers of taking theorists too seriously. I thought coming from a theorist is really great. I mean, uh, so 
uh, as experimentalists, we can take uh, uh, heart from this uh, statement of uh, uh, Sandeep. So with this, I think I will uh, pass the stage on to uh, the other speakers. And I think uh, Satya will probably put on the first uh, video uh, shared by Professor Barjan. Uh, can you unshare your screen? Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, screen sharing is stopped. Okay, fine. Is that okay, Satya? Tribute to Sandeep's eulogy. As we know, Sandeep was a gifted physicist and a friend to all. At the time of his passing, he was a distinguished emeritus faculty member of the University of Hawaii at Manoa. This, uh, I will use some slides, um, and I will also incorporate some material um, regarding Tom Weiler, who was also a good friend of Sandeep's. Sandeep and I were friends for 54 years. I made many visits to Hawaii to do physics with Sandeep. On each return, I would go to his office, sit in the easy chair on the other side of his desk, and resume interactions as if we were consider continuing a conversation from the day before. What makes this even more remarkable is Sandy treated everyone this way. Sandy had an incredible memory, both of life and physics. He had perfect long ago events in their day. With apologies, we can only approximate his history. However, with certainty, we can say that Sandy thrived in physics and friendships. He treated everyone the same, regardless of status. His interests included opera, symphony, and books, which he shared. He had a wide circle of friends. Sandy came, Sandy came from India to the U.S. to do his graduate studies at Purdue University. He received his Ph.D. in 1967 and a thesis advisor with S. Peter Rosen. He then did a postdoc at Syracuse University, and subsequently he was recruited by Sam Fu Tuan to faculty at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. I first met Sandeep in 1966. I shared an office with him at a University of Washington Summer Institute. We remained friends, and uh, but we only wrote our first paper in 1978, and that was on the weak ice suspend of the B quark and possible non-existence of a T quark. And what we showed is that if there were no B quark, then the B meson would have neutral current decays, such as B going to S L plus L minus at the level of two percent, and Therefore, one had a distinctive test of whether or not top existed. And thereby, the existence of the top quark was inferred long before the collider energies were reached to produce it. Sandy met Tom Weiler first in Madison. Uh, these are Sandy's words. We first met in Madison in fall 1978 when I spent a sabbatical there. Although I started collaborating with Vernon right away, and later with Francis, Tom and I did not do any physics then. However, along with Francis, Jacques LeVay, David Scott, and Marty Olson, we did have loads of fun. We played a lot of ping pong in the room next to the seminar room. We hung out in the evenings. Tom had just returned after two years in Liverpool as a postdoc. I always felt that Tom may have been suffering from overexposure to beta A momentous event occurred in Wisconsin in 1978, again in Sandeep's words, my stay in Madison was punctuated by a momentous event of my life. Towards the end of my time there, I got married to Haida. She was with me in Madison and we got married in Milwaukee at the house of a very old friend from my school days, Narenda and his wife Durga, with their sons acting as official photographers. 
The wedding was officiated by a family friend of theirs who was a retired federal judge who warned us no couple he had married had ever been divorced and he wanted to keep that record intact. And indeed, the record is intact. Tom and I met again in 1980 at the ICHEP 1980 conference held in Madison that year. Many old friends were there. My advisor, Peter Rosen, Jock LeVay, who was by then in Ann Arbor as a postdoc. Hirotaka Sugawara and I were giving plenary talks courtesy of Vernon and Francis, the organizers. By the time Tom made his first visit to us in Hawaii, maybe 1985, he had already published his famous paper on z -burst. So here's a photo, um, nice photo at a, a restaurant in Waikiki, uh, Hawaii, uh, known as Teo's, a Thai restaurant, and Teo is uh, in the background. And you can see Cindy and Ida at the uh, far end of the table uh, on the foreground uh, is Tom Weiler on the right and Walt Simmons on the left. Dining was always a very important part of the Hawaii uh, group and experience. And this is a, a photo taken in 1992 at a favorite Chinese restaurant of San Fu. And you can see uh, that uh, Tom on the right and and uh, San Fu next to Tom, and then uh, Sandy and Andy Ager. I'm continuing now with uh, reminiscences of Sandy, and um, uh, called uh, he, he called this Manoa and Madison have many connections, and he started with the connections that a Hawaii physicist had with Madison included Mike Peters, John Mernon, Xerxes Tata himself. And then he says, since 1970, Vernon Barber and later Francis Helson came frequently to Hawaii. We did indeed, occasionally bringing out even Charlie Gable and Marty Olson from Madison. And on the other side, San Fu Tuan, Ernest Ma and I visited Madison with similar frequency. So much so that we coined the name University of Wisconsin at Manoa to describe this phenomenon. And here's a partial list of people that took part on the, uh, took, were part of this UW at UH exchange. And the faculty side was John Learned, Xerxes Tata, Danny um, Marfatia, Steve Olson, Mike Peters, uh, four of the five here uh, were former graduate students, Xerxes at UW, and Xerxes a former UW postdoc. In addition to Francis and I, uh, going the other direction was Bob Morse, who's visiting professor at UH, and a couple of graduate students, Bill Long and Carrie Wisnott. And, and as I mentioned on the list, Steve Olson was originally a graduate student at um, UW and he ended up on the faculty at UH. And here is a uh, lunch of um, Steve and Sandy uh, with a visitor. Now, <clears throat> Sandy was a regular at Phenomenology Symposium that we held each spring in Madison. And, and in 2000, the Fino 2000, uh, we gave out uh, red caps to the participants and uh, Sandy was uh, so attached to it that it became a permanent part of his attire uh, when he went to conferences, when he went to um, uh, restaurants uh, and uh, even to the office. So here you can see Sandy with with his hat, cap. And the interesting part of this story is there was a third incarnation of this hat. So this is a note sent from um, uh, Sandeep to uh, uh, Concha Gonzalez Garcia. And it says, so it seems I have to thank you for getting this third incarnation of my Fino 2000 hat. First one lost in the sea en route to Venice from the airport 
second provided by Vernon, and now this one. And conscious re re Concha wrote back, didn't you get my note I sent with the hat? It was Francis who told me. I met him in a workshop a few weeks ago and I was telling him about my life these days and how when reordering my closet in Barcelona, I have found the Fino 2000 hat. He immediately told me that you were looking for one and I should send it to you. So it is him you have to thank. Now, Sandy, <clears throat> Sandy always maintained very close ties to uh, physics and family and friends in India. And in particular, uh, he was involved in, in uh, or promoted several U.S.-India uh, collaborations, um, which involved no, UA, uh, UW and the University. The last one involved the University of Kansas, and he had gone there. And he has. There's a note here of this. He said. Um, he said we are preparing to apply for grant for visiting U.S. and India for collaboration. And uh, it has three institutes in India and three in the U.S. Uh, and uh, the fields of research are obvious and cover collider physics, neutrino physics, and beyond a standard model. And he was asking Danny and Sudhir and Raj if they were agreeable to be on such a proposal, which of course they were. So 1980 was a banner physics year, particularly for us. And, and uh, we wrote uh, with uh, Sandeep and I and Kerry Wisnett and Roger Phillips wrote this paper called Matter Effects on Three Neutrino Oscillations. It was a long distance collaboration in Sandeep and Hawaii. Uh, uh, Kerry and I were in Madison and, and Roger was over in Rutherford Lab in England. And uh, the, paper, the paper now has uh, 599 citations. And what we discovered there was that there was a matter resonance in neutrino, inter uh, neutrino oscillations. And this resonance underlies the Fermilab long baseline, long baseline neutrino program, LVNF slash doom. So Sandy had been writing to a friend, and I happen to have a copy of, of his email. Uh, laid out a brief summary of our 1980 paper, and I'll quote from him. After the Wolfenstein 1978 paper, we wrote our paper on matter effects and three neutrino mixing case. We not only did the generalization of three flavors, but we also showed the famous resonance plot of mixing versus energy, in which the mixing goes through maximum at some energy, which depends on the delta m squared and the density. In our 1980 paper, we were primarily concerned with passage through the Earth, and so we looked at constant density case and saw the resonance as a function of energy. Enough of history, he says. And here is a plot from our paper. This is the matter resonance amplitude plotted versus the energy over the delta M squared, and the resonance peak here with maximum amplitude is obvious. Tom Weiler uh, organized a, a, shrift, a fresh shrift for Sandeep in 1996 at uh, Vanderbilt University uh, to celebrate Sandeep's 60th birthday. Um, the, the title was Topics in the Electroweak Interaction. Uh, a very nice meeting, a country western singer entertained us and Sandeep was most appreciative of this, this celebration. Now, neutrino meetings then started sprouting up everywhere, and, and Sandip was a regular uh, uh, at these meetings giving talks. Uh, I believe this one here with San Fe. Um, and, and a favorite meeting of his and Haida um, was the Venice meeting, and Venice is shown here except in the one year when the rainwater was ankle deep and more. Sandeep is gone, but he will not be forgotten. His influence on physics and people lives on. Through his wisdom, contributing to and sharing the discoveries of physics, friendships, and his empathy. We are grateful for our intersections with this brilliant and genial man of the ages. Sandeep, 
a cherished member of our physics family, rest in peace. We have come to a fork in the road. Sandeep has passed on the other branch, but we can be assured that he made our road a better one for others to travel on. Thank you, uh, Professor Bajir. Uh, we move to the next. Uh, uh, Vivek, if you sorry? allow me, uh, this is Umar Shankar. Yes. If you allow me, I sure. want to make one small comment. Okay. Uh, Professor Bargar talked about uh, the his first collaboration with Sandeep on the weak isospin of the B quark. Uh, that remained a concern for Sandeep for a long time. And uh, in the early days of LEP, uh, I, DP Roy and Sandeep wrote a paper saying that uh, LEP definitely settled the issue that uh, B quark indeed has weak isospin minus half. Therefore, the top quark must be around the corner. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to share that. Yeah, okay, okay. Thanks, uh, Uma. Okay, so the, the also if you l would like to say something, maybe in the second the half, uh, you, you could say a few more things if you like, uh, Uma. Okay, so we go to the next speaker, which is uh, Professor Rohini Godbole from the Indian Institute of Science, uh, Bengaluru. Rohini, uh, are you there? Yeah, yes. yeah I'm yeah. just trying to share my okay. screen. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, just a second. I hope I made you co-host. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, we can. Roini, can you make it full screen? Is it in the form of a word file or something? You have to go up, slide it up and down or something? Roini? Hello? Wow, is Roini there? Yeah, Roini has got, I think, somehow. She's uh, got cut or yeah. something. Isn't it? Yeah, she's not uh, there right now. Oh, okay. Gosh. Just, just give a, uh, just uh, wait. Let me try to call her. Maybe you can move to the next speaker and then come back to the Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm just trying to call her if she responds uh, fine. Otherwise, then we'll go to the next speaker, which is John. Hello, Rohini, you have uh, dropped yeah, out. Uh, are you I trying to connect? Again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to connect again. Uh, otherwise, we could move to the next speaker and then you could come back. Uh, is that okay also? Yeah, with you? You yeah, okay, fine. We'll do that. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, thanks. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you move to the next Okay, okay. Uh, John, are you there? Can you upload your uh, talk? Is that okay? I can share my screen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Rohini has some problems. She'll try to get back quickly. She'll come okay. after you. Yeah. Okay. Full screen? I am trying. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Great. So mine will be very short. I only have four slides. And I want to say that Vernon's uh, introduction was really great. And uh, this is a picture of Sandeep when we were at uh, our favorite sushi bar. And uh, he had one of those gold Nobel chocolates from uh -huh. his adventure in Stockholm when he got invited uh, to go there uh, because of the awards to the Japanese group. So, uh, whoops. So this will be short and, and a bit more personal. Um, 
I moved uh, to Hawaii in 1980. I knew Sandeep uh, a few years before, but I got to know him mostly uh, when I moved here to uh, head up the Duman project, the underwater neutrino thing. And uh, one of the charming characteristics of Sandeep already alluded to was the fact that uh, as an experimentalist, I could work with him from day one. And uh, much of my experience in the past with theoreticians was that they, they really didn't want to talk to experimentalists. And Sandeep and I hit it off from the very beginning. Eventually, we have uh, 57 papers uh, with overlaps in the titles and uh, in the authorship and uh, quite a few citations. So I put down four of them here and I'm not gonna go through these, but these were ones that were, were particularly fun in some of the earlier times. Uh, so uh, we published a paper in 1988 where I think we were the first ones to really uh, call the shots on uh, what was going on with neutrino oscillations. Uh, I was involved in uh, the ex experiments in Japan, having been in, in the IMB experiment in the US, and Sandeep and I uh, spent a lot of time cooking up uh, neutrino mixing theories. Although I have to say that at first we, we, we uh, were wrongly betting on the, the, long, the long distance oscillation of the, uh, of the electron neutrinos, but we eventually got that strained out. At any rate, I think we published the first paper that made the correct assumptions on the neutrino mixing, the three neutrinos. Uh, and uh, same thing, a uh, better version with Andy Acker, who was Sandeep's graduate student and is still in Hawaii somewhere, and dear Tom Weiler. Uh, and uh, then uh, we, we kind of were closing in on the, uh, there was a tremendous, older ones of you will remember, there was a tremendous controversy that we had started in IMB when we noted that there was a deficiency of the muon neutrinos from the atmospheric neutrinos. And it became known as the muon neutrino anomaly. And there was a big fight about it with basically the Europeans saying we were all, we were all wrong and some Japanese claiming right away that it was oscillations. Uh, at any rate, we started to put it together uh, and uh, so have our stamp on early interpretations. But a uh, paper that I like very much, uh, it was uh, detecting tau neutrino, I see a typo there, oscillations at PEV energies. Uh, we published this uh, and this paper was what is known as the double bang paper, which has had quite a few citations. And uh, we realized the ability to uniquely detect tau neutrino interactions uh, in the upcoming big detectors like ice cube, which wasn't, uh, wasn't happening yet, uh, wherein you would see a first interaction as in the lower left there, uh, where there was a charge current interaction and there'd be a big shower. Uh, and then the, a tau with a long enough lifetime would fly some distance in such a detector and then decay. And a key feature of that is that the decay, the tau shower would be about on average three times larger than the initial shower. We call these double bang events and uh, in the interim since, uh, since our friends in Ice Cube has succeeded in finding some of these events. So it's, it's a real thing. And the importance of it is that uh, you can tell uh, electron neutrino events, you know, all this statistically, and uh, by seeing big showers in general, if they're not neutral currents, and you can see muon neutrino events from the long distance muons that are made and via this one process, uh, plus another variant on it, you can see that there are tau neutrinos there. And we cooked up for the first time a way to talk about this in the neutrino flavor triangle, which is in that paper, and which has been uh, taken on by many people now 
only people generally make them more equilateral triangles these days. But uh, you can plot the fraction of um, muons and electrons and taus, and uh, in general, that moves toward the center. But it, it helps sort out the original, uh, the, the, the source type of source of ultra high energy neutrinos. So I won't go on any more about that, but that was, that was, whoops, that was a lot of fun. And I should say that this was a, 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 the, I think the first paper that we at least sketched it out at the sushi bar while drinking uh, on napkins at the sushi bar. And uh, that was one of the great pleasures of working with Sandeep. So we'd leave our wives to talk and we would be talking physics at the, at the sushi bar, <laughs> which they didn't appreciate too much. But So personal, uh, uh, there's much to say about my dear long-term closest friend in the physics department here and, and overall great, great friend. He was a gentleman and uh, I always think him, of him as the real Physicist, physicist. He was uh, he was all about physics. Um, nonetheless, we shared a, a love of good food and drink. And uh, although he he, I I could forgive him that he he didn't drink wine. He didn't drink good wine. So, but but he would drink good beer. And we had um, many wonderful meals here, big parties up at my house and uh, meetings around the world. Uh, and, uh, but the best, the highlight of these visits was for a while, it was almost weekly that uh, Haida and Colleen and Sandeep and I went to our favorite sushi bar, Takuri Te here in Honolulu, which I think we've had the pleasure of some of you uh, going uh, with us uh, to it, that location. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I think, Intellectually, best of all, was that Sandeep was, was the one theoretician who I could talk with about crazy physics ideas. And uh, most of the time, he would say, ah, John, you forgot about K goes to something or other, you know. He, he, knew, he knew all of these tricks in the weak interactions, and most of the crazy ideas went out the window. But uh, we had lots of fun cooking these things up, and um, we had some some great times. I'll say one, for instance, we did write several papers about, uh, including some other people here, about uh, searches for extraterrestrial intelligence. And one of the pleasant ones we cooked up was the idea of uh, an, an, ex an, an uh, extraterrestrial intelligence tickling variable stars and we'd look for uh, changes in the periodicity of some stars. When, when later we looked into this, I did with another friend, we actually discovered a new class of variable stars. Uh, we didn't find any eti, but we found some interesting uh, and unique phenomena. Anyway, we had some great intellectual times and uh, many years enjoying each other's company. And uh, damn, I'm going to miss him a lot. I'd miss him already. That's all. Uh, thank you, uh, John, for a, for a very nice, uh, you know, personal uh, uh, presentation. Uh, we now go move to uh, Shubhendra Mohanty. I hope he's there. Shubhendra, are you there? Yeah, uh, he was there. Yeah, 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 I'm here. Yeah, okay. Can you uh, please uh, share your uh, screen? Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe I missed... Uh, uh, Rohini. Rohini, okay. Yeah, she's uh, also back. Yeah, Yeah, she's back. Okay, okay. I, 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 I should have probably... So, Shubhendra, can you uh, do it after? Uh, uh... Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Okay, Rohini, then can you uh, share your screen? Oh, yeah. I'll try once again. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry about I think, that. Uh, no, uh, if it doesn't work out, then I think the best thing is to send the PDF file to uh, Satya. Then okay. he will upload it and then... So let me just see now. And yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And it's okay. Sure. And sorry about the glitch. No problem. Professor Dathar, uh, Professor Sugawara also joined. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Uh, hello, Professor Sugawara. Uh, hello, hello. Can yeah, you nice to, to have you here. We're sorry about the, you know, uh, conveying you to you very late, but uh, it was nice that you could join. Anyway. I can't hear very well. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Rohini, please go ahead. Okay, so thank you very much for giving me this chance because I, as, as you can see, you know, both uh, Varnan and John have had very long and uh, very fruitful collaboration with Sandeep. Here, I think you get somebody from a somewhat different age group and but however, you would find that the opinions and the memories are very similar. So I will do a sort of a combination of a personal remarks and the, some of the work that I did with Sandeep. So I begin with this picture that is there. Uh, this is a photograph of the front of my refrigerator. There are a large number of magnets. And some of you, if you have good eyesight, you will see this magnet in the center. And this magnet in the center was actually the beginning of my collection of magnets on the refrigerator. And this is in fact, uh, the photograph, uh, which uh, of the ma magnet of a photograph, uh, and this actually is the only one that is a personal photograph on my refrigerator. And this is from a photograph that was taken by one of these people who go on these uh, tourist boats. Because so, Sandeep, very kindly, Sandeep and Haider had taken me to a trip on board a glass bottom boat to see the sea life in Hawaii because Sandeep knew that I don't uh, really snorkel or swim. And uh, this was one of my, during one of my two trips to Hawaii in the framework of our two Indo-US projects. And uh, I said, what will I do with a magnet like this? I said, hey, you can put it on your fridge. And then that is where my collection of magnets on my fridge began. So I see my Sandeep and Haider almost every day whenever I open my fridge, even today. So. I think I first met Sandeep as I did most of the members of the Indian physics community at TIFR. So he was visiting TIFR and I think we all have always thought of him as a member of the extended Indian physics family. Anyway, we Indians are known for extended families and indeed Sandeep was a member of this extended Indian science family. Uh, we wrote actually only two papers together, but one of the papers we wrote together was perhaps one of my best first bestseller, and I think even the word I learned from Sandeep, not just the paper. So our main interests, uh, mine are Collider in Physics and Susie, and Flavor Physics and Neutrinos. Sandeep had many others, but these were really the striking ones. So they were kind of different, and it is actually a testimony of interest that I oh God, somehow... Uh, I have got muted somehow. We can hear it's you. It's fine now. We, we can hear, hear you. you. OK, OK. Because my computer told me that I was muted. OK. Sorry. So as I said, as I was saying, it is testimony to the breadth of Sandeep's interest that I worked with him at all. But as you will see, the one paper that I have chosen to talk about actually has flavor in the title. So that is kind of why Sandeep was there. And you would see here, this was a paper where we said that uh, the pro production of a very heavy flavor, heavy flavor like top leads to a large PT isolated electrons. So actually, as you can see from the title itself and the uh, first line of the abstract, this was a paper which said how to look for the top quark at a hadronic collider when the top mass is less than the W mass. And this was one of the suggestions uh, early suggestions of lepton isolation criterion. And I'm sure that all the collider colleagues in the audience will recognize the isolated lepton criterion to see the leptons from uh, decays of the top and the other heavy objects that is used most of the time. And I now produced here the references uh, from this paper to set the context. 
The preference number one is the paper by Arnison et al., which was the paper which presented the first W events, and they had reported an excess of single lepton events, which were back to back with the jet. And it was known that one source of leptons is heavy flavor decay, but somehow the community thought that these events would be dominated by leptons from the B and the C quark, whose masses were known, and mass of the T was at that time not known, but it was known that it is at least a factor three to four times higher than the B mass. And at that time, this uh, community's thoughts were echoed in the paper by Sandeep and uh, Francis Halsen, which is the reference to here. So Sandeep had a paper in 1979 with Francis and others saying that the leptons and the colliders will be dominated. And indeed, what we showed is that it had been realized for several years that the dominant source of electrons in this PT range should be the heavy flavors. However, we th people thought that the bottom contributions turns out to be the largest and therefore a very serious background to a top production signal. And I think in this paper with Sandeep, we showed that if one use the isolation criterion, this serious B background will be killed effectively. And this, I want to tell this to you because this is the hallmark of the kind of simple ideas in Sandeep's paper, which had big impact. And this used a very simple kinematical fact that Lorentz boost will affect momenta only along the boost direction. And by demanding that the electron and the muon should have no strongly interacting particles in a small cone around it, that it should be isolated, the top signal could be recovered from the background. And this is a small picture, a heavy quark in its rest frame. The, the most probable configuration is this, where the lepton and the, the neutrino and the lighter quark are all uh, well separated from each other. And however, when you detect the lepton, you have it has to be above a certain energy and momentum, and a lighter decay quark has to move with a higher velocity than a heavier quark to produce the same experimentally detected lepton. So if MQ prime was greater than MQ, then even in the laboratory, not uh, the le lepton and uh, quark, uh, light quark Q prime would be well separated. This was really our observation. And this is what we had shown in this plot, that even though the top quark will be produced much less abundantly, now here is the background coming from the BTK divided by 10. So you can see how big the background is. But the point was that if you looked at the angular distribution of this delta phi, uh, the, uh, phi angle, then you between the electron and the jet, you saw that the top quark uh, contribution dominated everywhere once you removed the small phi bins. And that was actually the major point of that paper. Sadly, you even realized that the electrons that they were calling electron, electrons were actually pions. So many of us sadly missed a trip to Stockholm, but I think the relevance of the isolation criterion still remained. And I chose this piece of work to show you that this kind of simple, but very effective physics arguments was the hallmark of uh, Sandeep's papers. This was one of the fastest paper I think I've written in my life. And Sandeep wanted a sexy, as he called the title. As a young person, I was a young postdoc. I was completely horrified with usage of such words. And anyway, we had claimed in the original title, is there, are these events evidence for the top quark and a question mark? So then he told me that, okay, Rohini, when you put a question mark, people know the answer is no. So better not use such question marks. Anyway, the prosaic PRL editors decided on the much more descriptive title that I showed you. Sandeep took physics very seriously, but not oneself. He essentially looked at doing science as having fun. And as a young, postdoc, because it is to be realized that when Sandeep finished his PhD, I was about 14 years old. So that should tell us the age difference between Sandeep and me. And by the time he came to the IFR and I met him, he was a famous senior physicist. Yeah, and I still think that he, in the, our interaction, this is the first time I saw a senior physicist saying, hey, you have to have fun doing physics. Uh, in uh, much later, when he came to Bangalore, we actually organized an Indian Academy of Science lecture in Bangalore. And this was the year the Physics Nobel Prize went to Kobayashi and Muskawa. And it was a great piece of luck to have Sandeep in IISC in, the, in Bangalore that year, because as most of us know, it was his sort of paper uh, which brought out the Sleeping Beauty 
uh, awaken, awoke the sleeping beauty of the paper of Kobayashi Nimaskawa. Discussions with him reflected his authority in physics, but did not reflect his age or fame. So younger collaborators could be at ease with him. Apart from his scholarship, I also treasured the way he treated everybody's opinions and thoughts with respect. He was a very kindly person, very friendly and humane. And as I have grown older in physics, I have realized that this combination is very, very rare. Indeed, Sandeep's passing is a passing of an era. Not in the topics that the community is interested in. He was always interested in the topics that were at the forefront of the everybody's interest because they were intellectually challenging. But in the way the community did physics, that has changed. I met with him over the years, some, some, you know, sometimes uh, many, many different places, Mumbai, Bangalore, Chennai, Ahmedabad, Philadelphia, Hawaii, the list can kind of go on. And since my mother's family came from Baroda, we somehow had a Baroda connection as well. I still recall times we spent making Khanvi and watching a Woody Allen film at his house in Hawaii and visiting a common friend, my classmate and Sandeep's young friend, Gyan Bhanot's house near Princeton for a party. The last time I met Sandeep, I think was in Hawaii. I recall him coming all the way to the department in Hawaii on Saturday. As I was arriving on a Saturday and there was not going to be anybody else, I'll be alone for the weekend. Sandeep did own a car, drive a car. So he came and I think I treasured it even more. And I think we went out for dinner somewhere as was usual with Sandeep. Uh, he also took me and introduced me to sake and sushi as many others have talked about his food uh, interests. In fact, I think with him, I also went to John's house on the top of a hill. Uh, so he was very gregarious person. Latest with Sandeep and Xerxes, we brought out the special section of current science on ECG Sudarshan. And in the discussions with him during the time of bringing out the special section, I learned quite a lot of things, not just about the physics, but also the times of ECG Sudarshan. Sanjeev was come to Bangalore and give a talk in the symposium we had for ECG Sudarshan. Unfortunately, he had to cancel it due to the health issues. And it is to my forever regret that I did not try to induce him to send us a pre-recorded talk. We will all remember you, Sandeep, for your scholarship, your knowledge, your excellence in science, and equally for your kindness. I cherish your approach to doing physics as having fun. And I think when I once gave a colloquium in Hawaii, and Sandeep said, ha, ah, that was fun, wasn't it? I felt he was giving me the best possible compliment because I think he looked at physics as doing fun, having fun. I'm glad that I had a privilege to know you and to do discuss, do or discuss physics with you, Sandeep. Rest in peace, Sandeep. Thank you, Rohini, for a very nice uh, you know, presentation. Uh, where you brought out your interactions with Sandeep. Uh, uh, now, let me go to the next speaker, which is Shubhendra Mohanty. Uh, can you share your slides, please? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We are going a little you know, slower than what we expected, but okay, yeah. that maybe it doesn't matter yeah. too much. I, but I, if I you can, to uh, try to, yeah. Yeah, I don't have too many slides. So sure, I'm... sure. So I'll be talking about uh, the time he spent here in Ahmedabad. So he was a visitor since right from 90s to Ahmedabad, and his home was in Baroda. So he used to come and visit his mother. But long period from 2012, and his last visit was 2015. And during those times, Anjan uh, Joshi Para. Sandeep and I, we used to work down ice cube neutrinos. So I'll say a word or two about that. Because uh, Joshipura had a very early paper with Sandeep. He knew him much earlier. He, I, he called a paper of Joshipura and uh, Sandeep on neutrino decays, which also remained Sandeep's paper of neutrinos. Okay, so. <clears throat> I mentioned this one idea of Sandeep, which we pursued here. So there was a problem in, uh, so he used to just bring the, whatever the problems are with ice cube and we used to cook up some, or we used to think of some physics, uh, I mean, some theoretical models to solve them. So this was the problem 
that even though the cross section for this glass show resonance uh subindra so, so can i yeah sound can is I not suggest, that good uh, can i suggest that you switch off the camera okay okay i'll i'll switch off the camera okay please go ahead yeah yeah so <clears throat> yeah so this was the problem even though the glass show resonance from uh, process has the largest cross section the glass show resonance events are not seen so this light of this uh, screen that you don't have the any events at the energy where this glass show resonance should be seen and sandeep solution was characteristically short and sweet he said well if new there is a inverted hierarchy and there is a decay into the new 3 state of the neutrinos from either new 1 and new 2 and the new 3 has since u e 3 is small it has a very small fraction of new e so the component of new e in the neutrino that we get on earth would be very small which is why we don't see the glass show resonance event so this was published in this paper this with joshi para and myself and this was the style of his uh, the collaborations he did his he had a very short and incisive uh, ideas and then we'll we used to work on the theory of how to make those work so he had been coming to ahmedabad since like early 2000 although we started collaborating in 2012 so among the things we did i have i just jotted down the things we did together so the first among the first things uh, we would do when we landed here would go look for lika with the beer because he had a, he could buy beer we could not we have a prohibition in ahmedabad so he could show his american passport and get beer so we would go and buy some beer and then we'll drink in his room in uh, uh, in the guest house among the places he like to visit was one restaurant called swasti restaurant this is a restaurant which uh, has uh, traditional gujarati food so we used to go there and uh, he used to recall the food he used to eat when he was a child and he, he says that his favorite vegetable was potatoes so most vegetables were most of the things he ate was some combination of potatoes and so this was one of the restaurants he enjoyed visiting most then there was house of mangal this was also another converted haveli in ahmedabad which is now a restaurant which gives uh, traditional gujarati food so he used to like the food here this is a traditional indian where he says that, that they don't uh, those those kind of cuisine is not popular anymore so it's gone out of circulation so he loved visiting that and recall that kind of food he used to eat when he was a child he also loved reading so he was a very voracious reader and he spent a lot of time in this local bookstore crosswords and he'd go sit there and he'd browse books and buy a lot of books he also liked watching movies and he i remember he told me that we think that uh, bergman movies are all about dark and very grim subjects but he had a movie a romantic movie which was uh, wild strawberries i think and i remember we went out to see a movie the imitation game with dp roy and then we had a lot of uh, that too talked a lot about uh, turin and his other work well it was all not just uh, good times and uh, i mean physics and good times we used to i this planet health is a local pharmacy and i visited this very often with uh, sandeep or for sandeep uh, he used to be unwell a lot uh, but he took it in his stride and he'll just uh, medicate himself for instance he used to once he was ble- bleeding profusely through his nose and he just told me that oh, it's just high blood pressure so get me a um, blood pressure gauge so that he can monitor it and get some lot of cotton balls and that's all he did so throughout i mean towards the end of his visits to 
Ahmedabad, he was not well, but he still kept on, I mean, the, the good food and the good life he carried that on. And I also visited uh, Hawaii for a month with Sudhir, and he and he were very hospitable to me <clears throat> during that visit. So, in his visits to 2015 was his last visit to Ahmedabad. So, not only he was, I mean, having a, I mean, eating out and watching movies and having a good time with us, he found time to go meet his friends. So, this is Vadodara Center for Animal Rescue and Emergency, some organization. So, he must be some of his old friends there. And this is something I, I mean, I remember about Sandeep. I went to him with many conferences, right? like, and no matter which city you go to, like Delhi or Calcutta, Bombay, he'd always have some old friends from Gujarat or somewhere. So he'll go always make it a point to go visit them. So he did remember his friend. Point. Sound is breaking. Yeah. This was among the last mail that I got from Sandeep. So he was concerned about uh, the lockdown. And he asked us how we are doing. And then he says, so this was like five years after his last visit. So he says, after 2015, he says, I came to your place for dinner and I browsed through a book. But don't recall the title, but it was about following the monsoon. It described traveling with the monsoon all the way in from Goa to Cherrapunji. If you still have it, can you send me the name, author and publisher, please? Thanks. So I was very amazed that uh, five years, he just had a look at the book and five years later, and he wanted to read it. So I did indeed send him the name and the title of the book. Yes, I saw one of your colleagues, Rangarajan has moved. So he also mm -hmm. kept track of who is where and kept track of his old friends. So this was among the last uh, mails I read. And to the, to the end, he was concerned about us, how we are doing in the surviving in the lockdown. So rest in peace, Sandeep. We'll all miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Shubhendra for uh, sharing your memories. Now, before we go to the next speaker, which is uh, Navamandal, uh, Art McDonald would like to say a few words. He's, uh, uh, it's quite late in his uh, where he's staying, so uh, he would like to say a few words before he takes off. So, Art, could you? Uh, are you in? Yes. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. Please. Um, so, I'd like to uh, share the screen. Uh, yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. So. Uh, um, I've been uh, going to Hawaii uh, almost every year with my wife, Janet, here uh, since 2004, I think. And uh, Sandeep and, and John but were uh, a large part of the reason for, uh, uh, for going there. A great opportunity to discuss physics. Uh, of course, the social life in Hawaii was also wonderful with our friends and uh, uh, Ida and uh, Colleen were a part of these uh, gatherings as, as we had at conferences around the world. In fact, I think I'd still be lost in Venice if it were not for Ida's uh, mm -hmm. knowledge of, uh, of that place. We also got together there very often. Uh, but uh, Sandeep was just a wonderful person to, for an experimentalist to interact with, as John has said earlier. Uh, you know, one has ideas that are sometimes crazy ideas, uh, or uh, one is trying to understand the latest result that has come out uh, in one way or another, either experimental or theoretical. And uh, uh, Sandeep was simply a, a, a wonderful person to, uh, to talk with, to uh, attempt to uh, understand what that all means. And... Uh, uh, so I, I really feel as though I'm missing a, a very good friend at this point. 
and uh, I uh, uh, express sympathy to Ida and really to all of you because I think all of us have miss, are, are going to miss a very good friend and colleague and uh, uh, his contributions in many ways over the years are, are very significant. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to say a few words at this point. It's now 1.30 in the morning, my time, and I think I, I may uh, uh, excuse myself at this point, but uh, I wish you all well, and particularly Haida. And the same is true from Janet Haida. Thank you. Thank you, Art, for uh, you know uh, staying all the way to now. And uh, certainly, yes, uh, since it's so late, uh, yeah, we, 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 we treasure your uh, presence here. Thank you. So Thank the next you. speaker now will be uh, Nava Mandal. Yeah. So Vivek. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I don't have to. I don't want to uh, share any slide. I will be just uh, speaking. Okay. So that's. Uh, <clears throat> so let me just uh, you know thank the organizer for arranging this meeting in remembrance of Sandeep, a dear friend, an excellent physicist, and most importantly, a great human being. In the academic sense, I may not really qualify to call myself a collaborator of Sandeep. Yet, over the last one and a half decade, when I was deeply involved in the INO project, he was my guide, advisor, and collaborator all in one. He actually galvanized international support for the INO project whenever we needed. He was convinced that INO project is extremely important for all of us in India. And he also helped us in refining its physics goals at the early stage of when we were defining the physics goal of INO. I must also mention here his help and advice in organizing the Lepton Photon Conference that myself and Rohini was organizing in 2012. He was in you know International Advisory Committee, but more than that, he was always there to advise us, you know, to choose the speakers and so on, came to the conference, chaired the session, and you know, he was always, you know. You know, part of it, the whole thing. Actually, I met Sandeep for the first time in 1982 uh, when we were organizing the first ICOBAN meeting at Mumbai. You know, these are the proton decay time. Of course, he was uh, visiting TIFR even before that, uh, but uh, I had not uh, met him as I was mostly at KGF those days. And he was very much interested in the experiment that we are conducting at Polar Goldfield at that time to study the stability of proton. And he was also interested in grand unification that time. And in fact, while at TIFR, just one year before uh, this ICOBAN meeting, he wrote this paper uh, jointly with B. Gupta and Virender Singh uh, on the decay of neutron uh, into antiproton, positron, and neutrino. This is the delta B equal to two or decay mode. And I recall discussing with him in TIFR West Canteen on the feasibility of detecting such a decay mode in our detector at KGF and also the capability of our detector in general. Another paper that already Rohini has mentioned uh, of Sandeep that draw my attention around that time, let me again repeat what uh, Rohini has said, was the paper he wrote with DP and Rohini interpreting the lepton plus jet event discovered, uh, observed by UA1 as possible signature of top core. While the interpretation of UA1 excess turned out to be not correct, and uh, the fluctuation of background that quite often happened in science. But, but it was due to the background fluctuation, but the signature that uh, um, Sandeep Rohini and DP described for the top quark decay in that paper became the main channel uh, that we used uh, top quark for, for the discovery of top quark many years later, actually. So I actually, you know, this paper is one of the early uh, papers that I was very excited with, actually. And I think uh, Rohini also touched upon this, that Sandeep uh, should be called as the man who introduced Kabayoshi and Maskawa to the Western world. Many of you know that Kabayoshi and Maskawa's Nobel Prize winning work on three generation was unknown to the Western world for almost three years after its publication in Progress of Theoretical Physics uh, with only just two citations and both from Japan, Suwara-san is here. In 1976, uh, Sandeep and Sugarasan published their paper, CP violation in six quark model, based upon this earlier work of Kabayashi and Maskawa. Actually, uh, what Sandeep told me later, 
that Sugada san draw the attention of Sandeep to this paper and together both of them jointly draw the attention of the world to the Kabashi Maskawa paper. Uh, this is, of course, the rest is history. The golden era of uh, high energy physics during 17th, which was you know, basically started with that paper. Uh, now, I started meeting Sandeep regularly after our first meeting in 1982, mostly in India, as he was a regular visitor to TIFR and other institute in those days. And he used to attend both web series of workshop and DAE high energy physics symposium on a regular basis. You will see him attending those both meetings on a regular basis. He was there for the first web meeting at TIFR in 1989 and was also there in 2000 when proposal to construct the new underground laboratory of India was first discussed. Now let me now return to Sandeep's deep involvement with Indian scientific community in general and INO in particular. He certainly had many collaborators from India with whom he has written many interesting papers. And uh, uh, some of his theory collaborators uh, are, are present in this meeting and are already have spoken and will speak later. Speaking later here. So let me just say a uh, um, few words about his involvement with the underground experiment in India. Actually, so it started in uh, around the uh, late 80s and uh, when Raju Raghavan and uh, Sandeep uh, was the proponent of the original borex experiment. As you all know, uh, this is uh, to use boron-11 loaded ultra-pure liquid scintillator to study solar neutrinos. This was later converted to borexino. Now, towards the end of 1980s, Sandeep and Raju approached MGK Menon to explore the possibility of locating borex experiment at KGF. But continuation of KGF mine itself was doubtful by that time. MGK did try with the Ministry of Mines for the continuation of the underground laboratory, but was unsuccessful at the end, and KGF underground laboratory was finally closed down in 1992. And Borexino also found a home at Grand Sasso Laboratory. Professor Raj Sekharan has a list of missed opportunities for Indian science. I think this should be added and highlighted in that list. Had he succeeded in convincing the government of India uh, the government in running the KGF facilities for science, that is Professor Menon, history of Borexino would have been written differently. And I will draw your attention to Sandeep's very recent comment on this little later, toward the end of my talk. Now about his commitment towards INO. From the day one, Sandeep was fully committed to INO. He signed as a collaborator and truly worked towards making INO a success, providing scientific input in defining INO's science goal, galvanizing international support when needed, Sandeep was always there. Anytime there was a hurdle, Sandeep was the first to come up with suggestion on how to overcome it. During peak of opposition by activists when INO was stalled, Sandeep took the initiative to send petition to the then Prime Minister of Indi India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, twice, first in 2009, and then again in 2012, requesting him to expertise a granting of required permission to start INO construction. Both petitions were signed by reputed scientists, including Nobel laureates and future Nobel laureates. Sally Grasso, oh, Art MacDonald, Atsushi Suzuki, Sugara San, Hoshiba San, John himself, Sandro Bettini, to name a few. This was completely due to personal effort of Sandhi. In fact, after the first letter, I remember, uh, it was received by PMO's office. A copy was forwarded to then chairman of Atomic Energy Commission, Dr. Anil Kakodkar, who called me and said that it's nice to see that all these Nobel laureates are batting for I. I want to mention also uh, the visit of Art. I don't know whether Art is still here to India uh, in the January of 1916. And, uh, where he spoke a lot about INO on NDTV. Actually, Sandeep was the main person who convinced Art to make this trip to India. But just after Art won the Nobel Prize in the, toward the end of 2015, he received the, an invitation from Indian Science Congress to participate in its yearly conclave in January 2016. At that time, he was getting flooded with invitation, and he, he needed to decide which one to accept. So Art asked 
my opinion and Sandeep's opinion and also wrote to me saying that he promised his wife to take her to Hawaii that winter. So I wanted to know if it was worth to accept this invitation from Indian Science Congress. I normally do not recommend anyone to attend Indian Science Congress, at least in the recent time, but realize that Earth's visit will do a lot for public awareness on neutrinos and will be good for Ayanukov. Finally, it was Sandeep to convince Art that he should go from Canada to Hawaii via India. Art did that, and during his visit uh, to India, uh, he strongly defended Ayano in an NDTV event. Uh, it was great. Thanks, Sandeep, for convincing Art, and also for Art to accepting uh, the invitation. I now want to read out two recent mail that Sandeep wrote to me. First one, after myself and Sridhu Prai Chaudhary wrote a biography of Professor M.G.K. Menon in resonance last year. This has reference to the attempt that I was talking about earlier to bring Borex experiment to India. This he wrote in November last year. Here I, 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 I read the letter for you, uh, email. Dear Navo, greetings. Uh, do, you know, do you now live in Calcutta or still in Mumbai? Enjoyed reading your article on M.G.K. Of course, I didn't know him well but admired him. He had a very impressive career in physics and institution building. Unfortunately, I had some negative interaction in the late 80s when we were trying to interest him and persuade him to keep KGF open so it could be used to house our proposed detector Borex, in bracket later Borexino. He promised us that he will do so, but did not or could not. This was to me and Raju Raghavan. But I was very impressed when attending the workshop on neutrinos and B physics at HRI in 1998. Uh, he took the travel, that is MGK, to take the overnight train from Delhi to Allahabad. We had interesting discussions and he interacted with the participant very well. Trust all is well with you, Sandeep. This was in, uh, you know, uh, he wrote, uh, wrote to me uh, in, in November last year. And uh, I know was always in his mind. Uh, let me now share his last email that he wrote to me uh, in April this year. This shows his how deeply he was thinking of Ayano you know, till till he was you know his his death. Dear Nabo, I assume you are in uh, you are in lockdown just as we are. I have a dumb question. Maybe you can help. I think it was in 2009. While I was visiting IISC, there is probably Rohini mentioned about that, uh, Bangalore, uh, you asked if I would be interested in visiting the proposed site for INO. Of course, I jumped at the chance and arrangements were made. At the appointed time, this gentleman, in bracket, I cannot recall his name, actually, this is our engineer, NS Srinivasan, uh, came and we left. I am sure. You had something to do with this arrangement. This was this was this was the old site, which was later changed. Uh, we went by Mysore, and I had a chance to visit the palace, which was a first for me. Eventually, we reached the guest house near the site, where we spent the night and visited the site the next day. My guide seemed very knowledgeable. It was a fascinating visit. <clears throat> I was impressed that the engineers involved in building the infrastructure for the old dam nearby would be keen to help with iron. Also about how the new construction of estates for wealthy person was more responsible for pollution and, dis and disturbing the natural habitat than possibly iron construction. Now he said, this is interesting, can you confirm any of this? I wanted to make sure these were not fake memories. Indeed, actually, um, uh, uh, Sandeep visited uh, in 2009, and it was actually, we, we discussed a lot here. So this is actually his writing in uh, this year itself. Best regards, stay safe, Sandeep. Living in far away Hawaii, Sandeep was contributed so much for the progress of Indian side. Now let us all try to accomplish Sandeep's unfinished agenda, that is to build dialogue. That will be the most appropriate way to thank Sandeep for all he has done for Ayano. We shall overcome someday. 
may his soul rest in peace thank you thank you nava uh, 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 okay now we uh, move to professor rajshekaran uh, professor rajshekaran have you some slides to show or would you uh, be I speaking given, i have only? given it to uh, Oh, you have given it to uh, yeah. okay. Satya, is Satya, there? okay. Satya, you are there. Can you uh, share the screen? Yeah, I am there. Uh, just okay. give me a second. Okay. Yeah. Can you see? Yes. Yes. Uh, so you can. Can it be made bigger, bigger letters, if possible? <laughs> Otherwise, I knew I am going to read it. I think probably that is okay. I think uh, okay because even so if I will start yeah. reading from here. Yeah. You make it full screen. So even though it will be small. Anyway, I will read it. So. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I knew Sandeep from early 1960s. I was in Chicago University, and he was in Purdue. But we did not know each other at that time. Raju Raghavan, whom I knew, was also in Purdue, I think. Uh, P.P. Divakaran, who was also in Chicago with me, uh, P.P. Divakaran and myself went to meet uh, Raju Raghavan, and it is that way we met Sandeep. This may be in 62 or 63. Now I will just uh, yeah, uh, go on recounting some of, my, some of the events in my life uh, which held the contact with uh, Sandeep. Unfortunately, I got into a controversy with uh, Professor Agach Dalits, my professor. Soon after I returned to Bombay after my PhD, I devised an empirical test to find out whether a particular hadron was a composite of quarks or a composite of other hadrons. This test was based on K matrix and applying it on lambda 1405. I showed that it cannot be a composite of quarks. I did not publish it, but talked about it in the Energy Physics uh, Symposium at Adigar in 1967 and also at a Madison Symposium, IMSC Symposium. So, Lambda 1405 is the first example of what are nowadays called molecular hadrons or hadronic molecules. Sandeep wrote to me that Dalits was not very happy with me, he was uh, angry with me. Because earlier, Dalits, T.C. Wong, one of Dalits' students, and myself had worked on the same hair on Lambda 1405. And so perhaps Dalits felt that he should have been a co author in my K matrix paper. It was very good that Sandeep gave me a timely warning. Immediately, I wrote to Dalits explaining that it was not a full fledged paper. And in the full paper, I then acknowledged the Dalits properly. I think he was quite satisfied and we became friends again. Sandeep staying in my flat. As a consequence of a fight which I had with TA4 in 1970, I do not want to go into details why that fight happened. I decided to undertake a pilgrimage to the south, to South India. I sent my family to our hometown and visited the temple towns, Kanchipuram, Tanjavur, Sri Rangam, Kumbhakonam, Tirunamalai, Tiruvannandapuram, and Madurai. They were pretty much impressed by the famous temples and the magnificence of South Indian culture. During this time, Sandeep visited TAFR and stayed at my flat in the Bhaskara building. I think he stayed with A.P. Balachandran. Sandeep did not know where I had gone, and in fact, nobody in TAFR knew that. Sandeep said much later, uh, actually only recently, that uh, mystery was solved for him when he read about my trip, my South Indian trip in my autobiography. Next, I come to Hawaiian trip. In 1974, Sandeep invited me to visit him at Hawaii. I hesitated since I felt it would be difficult to travel with my family, namely uh, wife and two children. Uh, it was Varke, uh, Sindhiswana Varke in TA for my friend who said it would be a good opportunity for the family to see you, say, so I should go. I spent two months with Sandeep in Hawaii. I worked very hard, we worked very hard and completed a paper on the big neutral current which had been discovered rather recently. 
we analyzed the consequences of the most general form of the neutral current with scalar pseudo scalar vector axial vector and uh, tensor uh, lorentz structure for the current it is this paper that finally led to the integrally charged quark model on which i worked uh, with prabir roy on which i will say a little bit more later after that i had planned to take my family around for sightseeing but all hell broke loose one fine october morning remember this is october 1974 when the october revolution came an exceedingly narrow peak was seen in electron positron collision every day sanpur to one collaborator of a uh, uh, colleague of uh, sandeep was at the phone trying to pump out information on this discovery from stanford and other centers Sanfu, Sandeep, and myself wrote a paper on about a dozen interpretations of this peak, which became known as the Psi particle. I think this was one of the earliest papers on the Psi particle. Fortunately, our paper did include the correct interpretation, namely a CC bar bound state. After Hawaii, I took my family to many places where I gave seminars. J.J. Sakurai at UCLA, E.C. Sudarshan at Austin, Arun Mohapatra at uh, Maryland. B.S. Mathur at uh, Rochester and J.P. Balachandran at Syracuse were my hosts. Myself and my family were very thankful to Sandeep for this extensive trip, which enabled, uh, which was enabled, uh, extensive trip to so many places and meeting so many places, which was enabled uh, by Sandeep's invitation to me. Next, I talk about visit to Japan. I don't know something is coming. I visited KEK in Japan for two weeks in 1880-82. <clears throat> this too happened because of Sandeep. When Hirotaka Sugawa Ra was looking for a gaijin, foreign visitor, for the newly formed KEK, Sandeep suggested my name. My family was with me only for one year in uh, Japan. I uh, stayed for one more year. This was a very enjoyable visit. I was very much impressed by the devotion of the Japanese physicists and research scholars to work and physics. Some of the very senior professors in their 80s stayed in their offices or in the laboratory working even at 10 p.m. in the night. I got an opportunity to work with experimental physicists too. Asumi san wanted to measure the mass of the antineutrino using uh, internal bromstalum in electron capture of volume 169, and he wanted me to help. I calculated the atomic transition rates needed to study this process. Asumi san included me as the first author in the paper. This is my only experimental paper. At KEK, I learned three things, karate, Japanese language, and car driving. It was uh, Sandeep's wife, Haida, who taught me driving. I bought an old car from a friend. Although I could drive, I could not get a driving license since that needed Japanese language in which I had not become proficient. So I drove round and round the one mile long photon factory at KEK all the three things that I learned in Japan operated after my return to India, of course. My second visit to Hawaii. I made a second visit to Hawaii in 1989. I gave a series of lectures on string theory there. String theory had uh, come by that time, and I was an early proponent of string theory. I mean, an adherent of string theory. I gave a series of lectures on string theory in uh, Honolulu. One day, we saw in Physics Today a letter by Glashow and Ginspar who had criticized it very violently, string theory as theology. I answered that criticism in my lectures. Sanfu Tivan immediately said, we must publish it. I must publish my reply. So I um, managed to include Sanfu also. So Sanfu agreed. Sanfu and myself published a polemic in physics today in reply to Glashow and Winspar. Sandeep, a student uh, uh, Gong He and myself wrote two papers on integrally charged quark model, uh, which I mentioned earlier, which I had started working with Prabir Roy in PFR. So uh, Sandeep uh, He and myself uh, wrote uh, two papers on integrally charged quark model at that time. Um, I, I later, after uh, coming to Madras, I had been working with my student Lakshmi Bala and my collaborator Saurabh Rindani on this. So we did a paper uh, 
two papers. One of the papers concerned uh, was concerned with what are called radiation zeros. Radiation zeros in angle theory, angle theory had been discovered by Sagdev and Samuel. We showed how the presence or absence of these zeros in the experiment could be used to distinguish integrally charged quark model from fractionally charged quark model. For the position of the radiation zero <coughs> uh, depends on the quark charge. In the integrally charged quark model, charge of the quark depends on its color and so gets washed away in the experiment. Next, I come to Sandeep and the Nobel Prize, which has been commented upon by other speakers. Sandeep played a very important role in Kobayashi and Moscow winning the Nobel Prize. It was his paper with uh, Sugawa Rasan that made the Kobayashi Moscow work known to others. Sandeep and Haire were invited to attend the Nobel ceremony. Sandeep was very happy about it. He said this was the nearest he could get to the Nobel Prize. Finally, I comment on the INO. Sandeep was an early supporter of the INO. In fact, he was involved in it from the very beginning. From the time we started planning for INO, he was our advisor. He contacted Nobel laureates, Sheldon Glashow, McDonald, uh, Suzuki, Kajita, and other top neutral offices like uh, John Leonard, Alzen, and they wrote letters to the PM. Later, when the project got bogged down by opposition from politicians and like, activists, Yogesh Padi led a campaign collect, collecting the support of many NRIPs. Sandeep served in the core committee of that campaign and advised us how to go about it. Of course, INO has still not come out. We do hope we are we have not uh, dropped INO plan. Plan even now we are meeting regularly about INO. It will come up, and um, that will be one uh, <clears throat> way of paying tribute to Sandeep. Thank you. Datar, you are muted. Sorry? Yeah, sorry, sorry. There was some background. I had muted it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, thanks, uh, Rajaji, for this uh, uh, talk. Uh, we'll move to the next speaker, which is Xerxes. Uh, so, Xerxes, you want to uh, upload your uh, or share your screen or you just have something to say? Rajaji, Hello, uh, Xerxes, myself. you have muted your uh, mic. Can you unmute okay. it? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I'm unmuted and yes. I will try to share That's the right. screen. Okay. So, okay. And how do I go to full screen? Oh, share, stop share. How do I control do L? Screen? You can press control, control L. Control L. You will find viewer window. You will find full, full view. Control L did not seem otherwise to do it. F5. Try F5 otherwise. F5? No, no view. View is go better. To, go to the top view. View uh -huh. and then you can. Ah, view, view, view. Acha. Jared says you have spent a lot of time with experimentalists. You should do it. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, <I think. laughs> Here is two. Okay, something finally worked. Ah, yes. Okay. Good. The Good. problem is spending time with experimentalists is not always fruitful, right? In this case, <laughs> it was not. Anyway, so I want to say a very few things about my friend and colleague. Um, as you know, I've been at Hawaii and, uh, oh, the so problem with full screen is how do I go to the next slide? This doesn't seem to scroll. Page down, Any page down. The arrow keys should work. Any of the arrow keys. Down arrow or page down, down yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to talk about three things from a very personal point, Sandeep as a scientist, as a mentor, since I mean, uh, he was my mentor uh, when I joined Hawaii and Sandeep the man. So it always struck me that Sandeep identified himself as a theoretical physicist, not a particle theorist or anything like that. He was a generalist. And uh, in my interactions with him over the years, I learned why he did that. He, of course, is internationally known for neutrino physics and flavor physics. Others have talked about that. So I will not attempt even to talk. Vern and John have talked about neutrinos. I'm sure Rohini said a little bit about the top flavor. Others will say about the flavor. And I really should not be the guy talking here because my collaborative work with him is very limited, uh, especially considering how much time 
we spend talking together, as some of my colleagues say, BSing in his office, and how much I learned from him. And uh, I noticed he worked very easily with younger people. He always treated them on par as collaborators. And most importantly, something I don't see always, he was very generous with credit when it was due. And a young person, a young woman earlier described her interactions with uh, Sandeep uh, on the 40 GEV top course in the UAM data. And Sandeep and Hirotaka were also the first to explore the phenomenology of the KM proposal. He was a guest at Stockholm, as others have said. So it shows that Sandeep also worked with senior people. So I don't want to talk about my work with Sandeep particularly. We just had half a dozen papers. I looked at uh, Spires to find this out yesterday. I dragged him into some Suzy stuff. Uh, we did some neutrino stuff. And thinking about it, this paper on the 17 kV neutrino, which uh, some of you remember, some of you don't even know about it, was a lot of fun. It came because Eric Norman gave a talk in Hawaii and I asked a dumb question and Sandeep took it seriously. What the hell did I know about neutrinos? And I liked it because our proposal was very different from other proposals. It was also the short, shortest lived paper that I have written because after the paper got published, I, I can't remember the exact timeline, but it was literally weeks probably when the neutrino died. Vivek and other experimentalists spoiled our fun, but uh, it was fun while we lasted. And when I told Sandeep, hey, we just published this and the thing is dead, his reaction was, we can say we had the last word on the subject. And he was almost right. There was a paper which actually cited our paper, which came out way after the neutrino had died. But I found talking physics with Sandeep a lot of fun. Because most of the time, we are just trying to understand something. No intent of writing it up. And those of you who uh, know me uh, know that it is not easy sometimes for me to write up something. And uh, my uh, recent discussions, Sandeep's and mine, were on how quantum physics ideas develop more, not just history, but the physics, trying to put ourselves in that period. And it's very hard to do. Uh, hindsight is 2020. Um, we talked about Tomonaga's book on the story of spin and the thing that I had learned, you know, when I was in doing BSc in Bombay, all this vector model of the atom and so on, which I simply have not understood or appreciated. Yeah, it was fine, but people did funny vectors and why it was relevant. And Tomonaga's book really makes it come to life. It was not a very easy book to read. In fact, it was a very difficult book. In the same vein, Sandeep gave a very nice colloquium on Stern and the stern girl like experiment, which was mentioned earlier. And he even wrote this thing up on the archive. And we had many discussions on that. As John said, Sandeep was not afraid of crazy ideas. But the craziness had to be reasonable. I mean, it was not just crazy ideas for the sake of crazy ideas. So that was Sandeep, the scientist. As a mentor, there were many things that I learned from him. The first was, I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer. There are very few people who are willing to say that these days, I find. Uh, they know the answer, then they have to change it. We have to say it quickly. But I don't know. It's something that I learned. And I say I don't know very often. There was no BS. If he was not interested in something, he'd tell me. He's not interested. And Recently, I mean, unfortunately, I've spent too much time thinking of the hierarchy problem. And Sandeep said the masses and things are what they are. Don't worry about it. And so we would never talk about it. He also had an amazing sense of when bureaucratic things were necessary and when not. And I can give you two examples. When I first came to Hawaii, we had a one semester QFT course. And I said, look, one semester is not enough for QFT these days. This was back in 88. We should do two semesters. He said, are you willing to teach it? I said, yeah. He says, are you willing to write a course description? I said, yes. I said, what should I write? How detailed? He said, don't spend more than 15 minutes writing it. Just write down some points. I wrote completely simple stuff in literally 15 minutes, and I gave it to him. The next thing I knew was it was in the course catalog, and I was teaching the damn course. And I taught it for a lot of time. 
On the other hand, when we tried to get a postdoc in Hawaii and we had to argue with DOE, um, because we didn't have a postdoc when I reached and I thought it was a good thing. It took me a long time to convince uh, Sandeep and Sampu that we should do this. But once Sandeep got convinced, I mean, the way he moved, and I would have not imagined that it, I, I would not have known what to do. He spent a lot of effort during doing bureaucratic things, both at the university and with DOE, making presentations whenever they came in those days they used to come. And so I learned a lot. But most important, you know, while all this was happening, I never realized that I was being mentored, but I really was. So he never gave any indication. He was up there teaching me, and somehow I learned. I realized how important he was. Sandeep as a person, we have heard that food and drink and good company was very important to him. There were many occasions on which I've had fun going out with him and Haida and others. Uh, some were fancy places, some were holes in the wall. And I certainly will miss him at the TGIF beer in our courtyard at UH. Unfortunately, COVID has prevented that from happening, but it will come back. And Sandeep won't be. Music was very important to him, and I am a complete zero on that front. And one year, I don't know, something happened and Kalpana decided that uh, she was going to drag me to opera. Sorry, uh, other than the speaker, can all people mute their mics? Thank you. I'll do that. Uh, you please. Yeah. So, um, Kalpana decided to drag me off to operas one year and when Sandeep heard that, he was very happy and he, every, after every opera, he would ask me how it was and told me it was high time that I got a dose of some culture. <laughs> and um, we read many books, he read many books, some of which we discussed, mostly nonfiction. And we talked about many things and talking story in his office, sitting in that comfy chair that Vernon mentioned. I learned many things from him, both about physics I mean, of people in physics that he knew and he had known whom I had not met. And sometimes I met some of them later, some who I met, senior physicists, some of whom are in the audience of his interactions with them when he was young and in Syracuse and uh, many things. So those were very enjoyable things. I learned about people, about Sandeep and about life. And that chair is really comfortable. So this was one of the times when we were together in uh, Sendai. We went with the Hikasas. I think Kenichi took that picture. That's why he's not in it. Uh, today, Sandeep is gone. But his memories and influence will remain with us. Thank you. Thank you, Xerxes, for a very personal uh, kind of uh, talk. Very nice. Thank you. Um, uh, now we go, before moving to the next set of, uh, uh, you know, talks on memories of uh, Sandeep. Uh, we have a uh, uh, we have a close associate of Sandeep, which is uh, Sugawara San. So uh, are you there, uh, Sugawara San? Oh, I'm here. Can uh, you hear could me? You, could you, would you be willing to say a few words before we go to the next uh, half? Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, it's ex um, extempore, uh, but uh, I mean, I'm please, very pleased very to uh, see you, uh, all uh, Sandeep's friends, and uh, uh, nice to hear from you about, uh, about uh, Sandeep. The last uh, I communicated uh, with him was uh, several days before uh, he, he was hospitalized, and it was about a uh, photo. Some journalist, a uh, Japanese journalist, requested me uh, to give him some photo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in, in which Sandeep Sorry, can... Kobayashi Maskawa uh, were in, were taken in uh, Stockholm. Oh. Some interruption? No, Sugawara yeah, san, would I, you like to put you... your uh, picture on, video on? I picture. Think camera is on, but. <laughs> oh, oh, the picture is uh, not coming. Uh, okay. let me... <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, there it is. Now, now it is. Coming. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You. And uh, 
I asked, uh, I, I, it seems I lost it, but uh, I, so I uh, wrote to him uh, asking him to uh, give me this photo. And uh, he said, yes, uh, he will do it. But uh, that was before, uh, several days before he was hospitalized and it never materialized. I have a strong impression that uh, <clears throat> uh, he is having a hard time uh, uh, adjusting to this uh, difficult time of uh, a virus, a pan a pandemic, and more generally to the uh, drastic uh, atmospheric change of our planet. So in a way, uh, well, uh, I hope you don't misunderstand me, he's lucky uh, not seeing this sort of deteriorating uh, environment, uh, natural environment, also uh, human environment. Yeah, but lots of dictated like uh, leaders who deny uh, the danger of a uh, pandemic, danger of a climate change. Uh, since uh, Sandeep was a very sensitive person, he must have recognized all these and uh, he probably decided to go away. So uh, the rest of us must fight to maintain this environment, both human and natural side. Thank you very much for uh, providing this opportunity. And I'm very glad to see you and uh, listen to you. And uh, nice words for a good friend, Sandeep Pakvasa. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sugavara-san. Uh, okay, so we are sort of ha halfway, we are a little behind time, but uh, nevertheless, it's okay, I think, uh, with uh, all of you. I hope it's okay with all of you. We go to the, we, the shorter presentation. So uh, we have Basudev Dasgupta, Amitabh Datta, as I told you, is not there. Then Shruvati Goswami, Anjan Joshipura, Govinda Mujumdar, and Rahul Sinha. And then, of course, we have also Professor Joe's Val. Uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Or Vale, uh, maybe that's the right pronunciation. I, I don't really know. But Jose, uh, Jose Valle. Valle, okay. So, uh, uh, would you like to uh, speak first? Uh, that's okay with us? Or would you like to speak towards the end? I mean, after these speakers. Professor Jose? Okay, somehow maybe you're cut off. Oh, I now unmute. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ah. So, would you like to say a few words or speak? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Please go okay, ahead. Me. Then we'll go to the, the other people who are there in the program. Okay. I first of all thank Professor Datter. I'm happy to, to see here yeah, in quotation marks many of my old Indian friends uh, online. I just wanted to say that I enjoyed uh, Sandeep's company many times, both at physics conference discussions and also the good Indian restaurants he took me to because he knew I was an Indian food lover also. Uh, we have had the common, been in common places like Syracuse, Rutherford, Oxford, etc. And we have also had common uh, friends and collaborators, many from India. But really apart from the recent Dune papers, we have had only one joint paper. That was a theory paper uh, uh, reviewing the changes in neutrino properties brought about by the Kamland result he, he, that he was a member. Maybe I will actually share the screen because I have here his last message oh. to me. Sure. Uh, how please do please that? do that. Uh, Let me see here. Are you able to do it or? Uh, uh, I, I should be, but I need some time. Okay, share screen. And this one. Yes. Can you see it? Yes, yes, that's fine. Okay, to make a long story short, I just flashed my last uh, email from him. It was actually very recent, October 9, August 9. And that was about a visit uh, he made to our group in Valencia. I was his host and uh, he was very, very happy and me too. 
In fact, I posted uh, one of the pictures in the in the in the memory, memorial site. So, in summary, I had had the privilege of having Sandeep as a long-term visitor, as a collaborator, but above all, as a friend. He was a very good phenomenologist, but above all, he was a great human being. Sandeep has passed away, but I think Rohini mentioned. Uh, I hope his approach to physics and to people will remain. Thank you very much. Rest in peace, Sandeep. Thank you, Jules, uh, for these nice words. Um, okay, can you unshare your screen, please? Yes, yes, I yeah. now will do okay. that. So maybe okay. then uh, we go to the next speaker, Basudev Dasgupta from uh, the Tata Institute. Are you there, Basudev? Yes, I'm around. Yeah. Could you, if you have uh, some slide to show, then maybe you could share screen or uh, if you want to say something, that's also fine. Okay, thank you everyone uh, for uh, having uh, me as a part of this very wonderful uh, gathering. Uh, unlike uh, most of you, especially uh, the seniors, uh, uh, my interactions with Sandeep uh, are significantly fewer, but uh, that uh, does not mean that the impact that he has had on uh, my uh, physics career is any less. Actually, uh, already at the very beginning, I mean, when I was in my first year of graduate school, the neutrino physics is one of those fields where Indian scientists have had a very large impact relative to the kind of resources we have had. And seeing the name Sandeep Pakwasa on really foundational papers, you know, up front in the field of neutrino oscillations. I mean, that gave me confidence as a young person that, okay, I mean, you know, we can do something interesting uh, sitting in India. I mean, at that time, I did not know that, uh, you know, he had already been out of India for a very long. I didn't know him. But uh, I mean, just seeing the name, like Indian name, Sandeep Papwasa, on papers like the 1980 paper of uh, 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 Vishnan Barger, Phillips Papwasa, I mean, the, there are, I think, other very, very clever, I mean, I think the word clever is important here, like small, impactful, incisive, clever papers. And somehow that style really, you know, I love that style. And I got inspired to do things like that, looking at papers by uh, Sandeep Papasa. And it was, of course, a fantastic thing that, you know, when I finally got to meet him. The other uh, important thing that I want to share is that when I went for my postdocs abroad and you know, I talked to very, very eminent people who were uh, mentors as well, and almost without exception, all of them brought up Sandeep Pakwasa. I said, like, this is the kind of physics you know, that you know, like one of your fellow countrymen uh, has done, and so no less is expected of uh, you, I mean, that, so he was, he was almost held up like an ideal of a creative, smart neutrino physicist uh, from, and for me, that was great because I had independently arrived at that conclusion as a young student. So I was following his papers and trying to kind of copy the style in some ways even. So it is, uh, and of course we interacted later in many neutrino meetings and uh, it, it was very nice to, you know, you know, many people, I think Rohini mentioned the fact that you know, he would treat very young people with a kind of not, uh, I mean, not with, uh, in some sense, uh, that, okay, like, oh, you are uh, very young and let me, you know, be nice to you. Not that, I mean, he would really treat you like an equal and talk to you like an equal, and yet you could feel that warmth and kindness. And so that was just fantastic. That's not something that you see all the time. So with these uh, three uh, points that I mentioned, uh, I would like to conclude. It's uh, really sad uh, that we have uh, lost uh, Sandeep uh, physically, uh, but uh, I think uh, the papers that he's written and the impact that he's had on you know, a very wide variety of people, uh, perhaps not just in physics, um, I think uh, his legacy will live on. So. I'm very glad uh, to have been able to share these uh, thoughts with you and thank you so much. Thank you, Basudev. Uh, uh, we now move to the next speaker, Shruvavati Goswami. Uh, Shruvavati, are you there? Yeah, I am yeah. there. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so, you know, I 
I first, I don't have a slide. I will just share some memories that uh, yeah. I think I first met Sandeep around 94 or 95 in Kolkata web and we had some discussions and then what I remember was in 2000, uh, in, uh, uh, 2000 there was web in Chennai and at that time uh, I was there and uh, we were working on uh, neutrino decay myself and Sandhya and Devashish Mojumdar and um, as you have heard that uh, Sandeep had some initial papers on neutrino decay and also one with Anjan Joshipura and he was an expert and then we had some discussions with him and uh, as Rohini mentioned like you know I was quite young much younger to him and the discussions were like it was very free i never felt like you know he is such a big uh, physicist such a uh, you know uh, you know so much senior to me and it was really fun and uh, they, we had many discussions and although i had not written any paper to uh, paper with him when i was applying for jobs uh, then he agreed to write recommendations uh, for me uh, after that we met in several conferences and uh, uh, you know, one thing I would like to mention that when we were doing the Camland analysis, then Sandeep was great help to us. Uh, if we had any doubt about how to do the analysis and, you know, what are the kind of inputs that we need, then we will always write to Sandeep. Uh, DP used to write, actually DP started that. And then he would always uh, give us the information that we need or get in touch with someone in the collaboration who can give us the information. Now in 2004, Camland was supposed to, uh, Camland uh, result was supposed to come in the Paris Neutrino Workshop. And in that I was invited to give a plenary talk on global oscillation analysis. However, Sandeep uh, told uh, us that, you know, he is not allowed to share any information with us prior to the Camland talk in Neutrino 2004. Uh, so we, he could not give us any information and we did not, I had to present the results, but we did not have any you know, data with us on which the new analysis has to be done. However, I remember after Giorgio Grata's talk in 2004 uh, Paris meeting, Neutrino 2004 meeting, Sanjeev came, uh, Sandeep came to me with a paper, draft of the paper. I don't think it was in the archive or it was published, but it was a draft. And once the results were announced, he made it a point to give me that paper. My paper talk was after a day and we had one day to update our results with the new data. And my collaborator Abhijit and Sandhya did that and I was busy writing the talk and we could present our results with the new data. And I am ever grateful to Sandeep for giving a, you know, a young uh, faculty member uh, that paper in the right time. And I will always remember that. Whenever I had discussions with uh, Sandeep, one thing that always came out is, uh, which is, you know, his insight. In very quick time, he will go to the crux of the matter. I remember that in New Zealand web, we had a paper poster, Pomita Ghoshal presented, that was work done by Raj, Uma, myself, and Pomita. And we discussed hierarchy sensitivity uh, for theta 1, 3 equal to 0. And we had missed a subtle point. And you know, it was there in Pomita's poster. And in front of Pomita's poster, I and Sandeep were together in New Zealand. And immediately Sandeep told me that you have missed this point. And you know, he was correct. We later uh, um, revived the paper. Like, you know, we read it, the paper, Uma Raj and Pomita will remember. And you know, he immediately he got to, to the point. And uh, Later, when he was visiting PRL, I got a lot of chance to interact with him personally. As Subendro mentioned, he was not well, and uh, we uh, made it a point that he should have the dinner with us unless we are going out for dinner. And we had many dinners together, and he loved the Gujarati food. I had a Gujarati cook, so we could make Gujarati food for him, so that uh, also he liked the homemade food. And it was 2015, the year of the Nobel Prize, and he gave a colloquium in a PRL on that. And uh, during the lockdown period, somehow I had been in touch with him. He was a regular um, attendee of the INO colloquiums and INO series that Satya is um, organizing. And he uh, sent a mail to me after, the, after my colloquium. And he wrote that in connection with your talk in the INO symposium, you might find this bit of history interesting and revealing. And then he wrote, 
I would like to bring to your attention a few not so well known or appreciated aspects of the history of the muon and muon neutrino. In the period mid to late thirties in cosmic rays, there was found evidence for a charged particle with mass in the hundred MeV range. Because of the proximity of the mass of the predicted mass of the Yukawa meson, it was assumed for a while that it was the Yukawa meson. Uh, then. In 1943, Sakata and Ainu proposed a solution. They suggested that the Yukawa meson uh, is actually can be identified as the muon. So he wrote later. The last line was, "It was a long mail." In my view, Sakata did not get due credit for his remarkable and far-reaching contribution, although he became famous for the Sakata model. So after this, I had a lot of uh, few email exchanges with him in which he was. Worried about the situation in Hawaii, the lack of tourists there, and he also made it a point to ask about my daughter, how she is doing. So all this shows that you know he was so involved with his friends, and you know, even though there are, uh, if he had very few interactions, even then, and then in the Facebook also he was quite uh, active, and um, in during this period, and, and he made many comments, especially I. So many comments in Sri Ruprai Choudhury's post. So maybe he, if he has time, he can share. And it, you know, dealt with a variety of topics from Bengali literature, Shukumar Rai's poems, etc. So you know, he was so active. He was so in touch during past few months with many of us that I find it really difficult to accept that he is not there. And I really would like to think that he would always be there. With us, and you know, whenever I need something, I can just write to him. Sandeep, can you do this for me, or can you write a reco, or can you write this? And you know, he would immediately reply yes. So it's really very, very hard to accept that he is no longer there. Rest in peace, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you, Shruvati. Uh, uh, is Anjan Joshi Pura there? He is the next uh, speaker. Anjan, are you there, please? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, can you please switch? Ah, okay, fine. Okay. okay. Actually, I have known Sandeep. I mean, I used to call him Sandeep Bai. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, since uh, 1990, when he first visited uh, our place, physical research laboratory. Okay, his hometown Baroda, fortunately, is quite close to Ahmedabad, where our laboratory is. So he would make it a point to visit us whenever he is in Baroda. Even if he doesn't have too much of time, I remember times when he would just come for a day, but he would really make it a point to visit us. Okay, whenever he is in Baroda. Uh, and these visits were very fruitful. We learned a lot from these visits. And uh, this was just the beginning of collaboration. In fact, uh, in 1991, he made an extended visit to Ahmedabad. At that time, we had a lot of discussion on physics. Uh, this was quite an exciting period for neutrino physics. And he was thinking about uh, neutrino decay as a possible solution to solar neutrino deficit. In fact, he had written a paper way back in 1972, okay, suggesting this possibility. So when he was in Andabad, he said that, uh, uh, why don't we really try to uh, have a framework with just three neutrinos, uh, which can describe this uh, neutrino decay. And then we worked on it. There were also uh, other similar papers by uh, Jose Valle and uh, company. And uh, so in that, ultimately, I mean, the characteristic feature of that was that since there were only three neutrinos and the decay was to a, a Majoran, uh, actually neutrino decays to anti-neutrino, which means that one should not just see only neutrino flux, but even anti-neutrino flux from the sun. And uh, we had a detailed prediction of possible anti-neutrino flux. Also, the mass square difference, which was uh, needed 
uh, to really see this uh, decay solution as a deficit was in the right range also for the deficit or for the oscillations of uh, atmospheric neutrino. Uh, at that time, things were not settled. And uh, at that time, just the oscillations of new mu to new e could do both these things together. Of course, now we know that the things are different. Then after many years in 2015, when he last visited us, he again came back to uh, this uh, uh, decay scenario. And as Subhendra already mentioned, uh, at that time, we really looked into uh, the possibility of neutrino decay as a uh, solution to uh, having lower flux of muon neutrino, uh, high energy muon neutrino at high scale. Uh, of course, between 90 and 2015, we had many uh, visits by him. And every time we really uh, benefited uh, in discussion with him. In fact, he used to go to many places. Whenever he, he would be in India, he would not just stay at one place, but really visit many institutes, visit many friends. And that was his characteristic style. Okay. Uh, he, because of that, he has large number of friends in India and everybody really remembers him for this. Okay. Uh, apart from being a sound physicist, he was a very good friend as uh, almost everybody has uh, mentioned. When he is there, he's, he was really fond of good food and he would take us to various places. In fact, in one of his early visits, he said that he knows that there is a place in Ahmedabad which uh, serves traditional food, which you can find only in homes. We being in Ahmedabad did not know about that restaurant, <laughs> but he introduced us to that Swati restaurant about which uh, Subhendra already talked. So not just neutrino, he knew many other things. <laughs> Okay, and uh, it was really nice having him uh, uh, here so many times, and we really enjoyed all his visit. In fact, uh, Sandeep had said that he started his uh, career as a college teacher in Baroda. Oh, wow. So at that time, he would not have uh, uh, really imagined about doing research, probably. However, starting from that uh, environment where it was not possible to do research, he went on to really become a very distinguished physicist that we know him today. And his contributions, so many of them which people have already talked about, had really lasting impression on development in physics. And we will really miss you, Sandeepa. Thank you. Thank you, Anjan. Uh, uh, Vivek, uh, this yeah. is uh, Umashankar. I want to just make one comment about okay. uh, uh, I remember Sandeep giving a talk on this neutrino sol decay solution around the time that uh, Anjan talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, what I remember is his last comment saying the gallium data will either confirm this solution or rule it out. Because mm -hmm. uh, Already Ray Davis has set a limit of uh, survival probability of 0.3. So the gallium data, which was measuring the lower energy neutrinos, if it measures a lower value, neutrino, solution, neutrino decay is a possible solution. But if it measures a higher value, neutrino decay is ruled out. So even though he is sort of thinking of crazy ideas, he always had this thing at the back of my mind his mind, how things can be tested experimentally. Okay. Thank okay. you, Uma, for that uh, nice, incisive comment. Uh, the next uh, speaker is uh, Govindo Majumdar. Are you there, Govindo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, I will be very short. Uh, I knew him uh, since my graduate student, but I think a long discussion or only, I can say that only one interaction I had with him 
in the DAE symposium at Hyderabad. So maybe we can see your face. Maybe okay. you should reorient your uh, yeah yourself with respect to the camera. Yeah. Okay, okay that's so, good. No, so that's the only interaction I have in this uh, Hyderabad DA symposium. I think one evening we had a discussion meeting about the IONO project. And I recall that he had at that time, he had given a very, very good input to this, not only the physics, I recall that that time we were discussing about this possibility of the Cherenkov detector and other thing also. And he had, a, he had given very good input on that. And then, as Osama also Mandel has mentioned, that he was the one of the backbone to get the support from the outside to pressurize our Indian government to have the INO. And uh, we are in debt to him. And only my word is that we hope we will succeed this to get this INO sometimes, and that will be this our tribute to him. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you, Govind. Uh, the next is uh, Rahul Sinha. Is uh, Rahul is there? I've seen him. So yeah, you have if you have something yeah. to share on screen. Yes, yes, you can do yes. That. Please. Um, uh, Satya will show a photograph uh, in between if he gets it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Just. Yeah. So uh, basically, um, you know, it's really sad to see Sandeep go. Uh, he was um, a great friend, collaborator, mentor. And a great host uh, during my Hawaii trips. I first met uh, Sandeep, if I recollect correctly, is in '86 at the Berkeley ICHEP. Uh, I was writing a paper with Sanfu Tuan and uh, Susumu Kubo, and I went and introduced myself. And he said, "Of course, I know you." Uh, the warmth, the uh, uh, the way he dealt with us was so pleasant that I. Uh, continue to, you know, every opportunity to get to know him better. Uh, I remember uh, at the APS meeting in 91, uh, APS DPF meeting, uh, the big thing there was the 17 KV Simpson neutrino. Um, and uh, Sandeep was there, I think even Zrexus was there. And uh, the, uh, however, uh, uh, Sandeep and I spent most of the time uh, uh, watching TV because there was this coup, uh, Gorbachev had a coup and Yeltsin came up on the uh, tank and I told Sandeep, you know, I feel like going and attending talks. Sandeep said, oh, talks are nothing. This is where history, this is where big things is. So we sat down and watched a lot of TV there. And uh, then I got to know him a lot better when he came to India. Um, so he was one of those who convinced me that it's time to go back. And, um, you know, there are very good opportunities. And in fact, uh, uh, my position at TIFR initially and then at IMSC, uh, he was the one who convinced me to accept the positions. And uh, I, you know, I, uh, when we did this, when I did this work on B2K star LL, there were very few takers. And I re remember receiving a lot of negative comments from a, a large section of the community. And uh, finally, I was in despair and I wrote to, uh, I asked him, shall we have Sandeep's opinion as well? And uh, so we wrote to Sandeep and Sandeep came back saying, of course, you're right. And uh, he had no <laughs> thing. And uh, so I owe my career a lot to him. Uh, a lot of my uh, the ability to, you know, uh, feel that I can be a physicist. I owe it to Sandeep. We started collaborating uh, after my first visit to Hawaii. And uh, I remember uh, Professor Sugawara and uh, uh, he took us to dinner and Professor Sugawara drove us because Sandeep uh, doesn't drive, uh, as habit shared with me. Um, I don't drive, he hated driving. So uh, we went to a restaurant uh, with Heide and then to his house uh, for dessert. And uh, his house was under renovation. And uh, Heidi was saying, oh, we are getting old. We need to have better passages and things. And uh, so then um, we, we wrote several papers uh, that uh, I felt very happy about. And uh, they were all idea-based papers, and Sandeep loved them. And uh, the next meeting was in uh, the next big meeting. Of course, every time in India he came, we met at conferences. The next big meeting was in Keck. Um, where I was joining Bell Collaboration and he was also uh, 
there as a plenary speaker and uh, we hit off a uh, uh, really close friendship he was traveling back to india we were in the lounge together and he he took me to the lounge he treated me so well and then uh, we uh, wrote our uh, second paper and then every year he kept visiting uh, imsc so he was a regular i hosted him regularly for several years at imsc and then in 2015 uh he he was spending time in tif uh, at prl but he said he can't come to Ch- uh, chennai this year so i should visit him and uh, so when he came de- to chennai uh, they should also visit deshpande and uh, so at this uh, meeting in uh, prl uh, deshpande and i both went and he took me sightseeing he said no 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 we, we should find we can't be discussing physics all the time so he took us to many restaurants uh, in uh, amdavad and uh, it was it was really a great time that his last visit here was in 2016 uh, when he presented uh, uh, the colloquium the uh, stadgalak and uh, i remember that very well and um, so he was a, he was a regular touch and email but i also remember you know when i went to hawaii uh, second time Uh, he took me to the sushi bar he took deshpande and me to the sushi bar we had a, a, a gathering at learner's place for the whole group gathered and his beautiful view from his house uh, uh, of the uh, queen said i forget the, but uh, we had dinner there and then uh, we had another uh, separate outing with the deshpande's me and uh, uh, pakwasas um and we went back to deshpande's house which was renovated up for several years later it was really nice uh, that i have got to know him um uh, my physics my personality everything was influenced heavily by him the way he treated youngsters is the way all of us should and i really learned that from him sandeep you taught us a lot rest in peace hi deep my yeah i really uh, you know i appreciate a lot thank you thank you uh, rahul uh, thank you uh, is gautam bhattacharya there still hello is gautam bhattacharya there okay no okay so then let's open it up whoever would like to say a few words maybe you can uh, uh, say so in the chat or you can speak here uh, on zoom and then uh, uh gautam is there yes, he is there sir gautam is there uh, yeah. uh, maybe he is muted his mic is that so okay i'll ask him to unmute uh, he is there ah uh, gautam is there gautam can you unmute ah uh, yes now i you can see me yeah yeah yes okay yeah, yeah, yeah. okay uh, very briefly i mean uh, uh i don't exactly recall when i met uh, sandeep first maybe one of the conferences in kolkata when i started after i started my phd in early 90s uh, he used to come uh, you know quite regularly in those days maybe one of the heps webs uh, but he was such a uh, you know affable character i mean such an affable personality that uh, from the very first day i was a fan of sandeep because he used to treat the students like equals i mean and um, uh it's not that i uh, worked with him but ever since i have had several opportunities to meet him in various conferences and uh, you know i mean uh, either in india or abroad and uh, it's uh, his you know working with him i mean gave me a lot of lessons about how some of the interesting ideas were developed i mean it is one thing to read an interesting paper and it is another thing to hear from a person who saw some of the developments from very close i mean and in some of them he was probably a part of or you know i mean some of his uh, friends were a part of and he he knew how some of the trivial observation apparently trivial observations led to non trivial conclusions when uh, a genius mind is at work so you get a completely different perspective when you hear how you know i mean all these things i mean historical perspective from a some from someone who saw some of the developments from very close now sandeep uh, oh, i remember one particular conference where uh, i think in 99 uh, one of the conferences in uh, tejanse and uh, heinrich pace one of sandeep's uh, future uh, postdoc and uh, martin hertz were one of the organizers 
uh, Jose Valley is here, I mean, he, he was probably there as well. Um, and that was one of the very few conferences where my wife accompanied me. And uh, I remember one um, discussions during the conference uh, dinner where, um, you know, I mean, Sandeep was kind of in the same sentence, he was talking to me about some of the, uh, you know, physics that was discussed there and about cricket because uh, that was the time when the World Cup in England was going on and about Bremen from where his wife came uh, and about the beauty of Bremen and some of the, you know, stories about Bremen. He was absolutely comfortable. And uh, when I heard about Sandeep's demise, I was telling my wife, do you remember? I mean, my wife doesn't know about the physics because she's out of, you know, my uh, working life. And so in a sense, I mean, she doesn't know the physicists except those whom we meet very, uh, you know, socially. So, but she remembers, I mean, that was the impression of Sandeep that after 20 years she remembers, yes, I, I do remember, I do recall, uh, uh, you know, Sandeep's, uh, dis the discussion that he had that day. I mean, that was Sandeep's influence. I mean, in the sense that the impression that he had that someone who is not related to, uh, you know, our kind of world, I mean, remembers 20 years down the line. I mean, that was really, you know, kind of Sandeep's impression that on, on people who are living in that sense. Now, the other thing I would, I still recall, I don't know where uh, it was. I mean, one of the conferences and uh, more than the stocks, uh, some of us were interested to, uh, you know, follow the cricket score. I remember that um, it, it was long time back. So it was not the days that when you could, you know, I mean, from in your mobile, you could see the Creek Info score. So we had to access one of those, uh, you know, desktop computers where there was an internet connection. And uh, in the backdrop of the talks, I mean, during the whole day, uh, I remember uh, myself, uh, I think Rohini was there, Xerxes and uh, Sandeep were exchanging, you know, the latest information about the development of what was happening when India is going to win or lose or anything. Now, it's not that Sandeep was not a very uh, formed person. I mean, uh, I remember that uh, in a conference in Mumbai, in TIFR, uh, in uh, 2011, probably, it's an international conference, I had an opportunity to give a talk and Sandeep happened to be the chairperson. Now it was a short a half an hour talk. Now I was hoping that Sandeep would give me uh, two extra minutes. Now when uh, the, you know the my 30 minutes was going to be over, I looked at Sandeep. It was the same infectious smile, but I knew that my time was up. So, <laughs> uh, you know, Sandeep's influence will uh, be in me forever. I will cherish his memory in a way that, I mean, I will try to emulate some of the things like, uh, you know, treating the students, treating the youngsters uh, equally, um, with, like, you know, I mean, not as students in a sense, I mean, share uh, science ideas, uh, giving the sense, you know, giving, instilling the students the sense of equality, like, like equal uh, partners in, in sharing science ideas. That was probably one of the things that was mentioned by, uh, Many of us, I mean, probably Rohini and also others, uh, rest in peace, Sandeep. Thank you very much, uh, Vivek, giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Gautam. Uh, uh, does Murti, uh, first maybe Uma, Uma wanted to say something, right? Uma, are you there? Uma Shankar? Yeah, I'm here. I just wanted to make uh, some comments. Sure, sure, please. Regarding... No, no, no. I already made okay. the, the intermediate comments at the end of the talk. Okay. Yeah. So, Murthy, do you want to say something or Indumati? So, Dada sir, uh, I would like to say a few things. Okay. Sanjeev, go ahead. So, Satya, can you share the picture? Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll say, please go ahead. Okay. Just so, uh, uh, I, uh, my first interaction with Professor Pagvasa's work when I was a PhD student mm, in Calcutta University with Professor Amitabh Rai Chaudhary. So this is 2004, uh, yes. Uh, Professor Rai Chaudhary told me that, you know, you need to uh, solve a three flavor neutrino oscillation uh, equation uh, with matter effect in, in built in, into that. So go and try to find out, write a code which can solve this three flavor neutrino oscillation uh, framework. 
so in his office there was a, a old cells and i found a paper of by professor pagvasa and uh, professor barger and philip that basu mentioned so it, a print out was lying there so i just took that old print out from professor raichaudhary's office and i started solving that and that was the you know door step you know using that paper only i could manage to write my own code to solve a three flavor neutrino oscillation framework and find out the probabilities in presence of frame profile and still i am using that uh, so this that was my first connection with professor pagvasa's work and then i first time met with him when i was a postdoc and i was attending the popular pheno conferences at wisconsin medicine which was being organized by tau han professor barger so i me and my wife we went to wisconsin medicine to attend that conference and we met professor pagvasa in the same hotel that we were staying and he realized very easy within a few hours of discussion that we are completely vegetarian and we are lacking vegetarian food so during that five day conference he used to take us in the evening to the popular itari places in wisconsin medicine me and my wife he used to take us to have vegetarian food so we were very lucky that sandeep was there to take us to those places and have nice vegetarian food and then onwards you know we were discussing many things uh, and finally i could invite him to iop in 2016 and at that time professor uh, jogesh pati was also visiting iop so you can see in this uh, photograph we had a very uh, interesting get together i still remember uh, sandeep was telling i need good quality beer sanjeev so can you take me to some place so i had to call this hotel and to ask whether they have german beers so they said yes we have so i booked you know for five of us a table and then we took sandeep there so you can see in this photograph professor maharana uh, professor sudhakar panda professor pati professor pagvasa myself we have and uh, on 16th uh, ja on 15th january 2016 he gave a colloquium on the stern garlock experiment and the discovery of electron spin and that was the, uh, the that colloquium was well attended more than 100 people you know in our uh, lecture hall so Uh, and after that we had several email exchanges regarding i know the progress and also whenever i have some queries i used to mail him and he used to answer me so when i heard from subhavati di that he is no more you know it was really a, a big setback for all of us but as govindo da mentioned that i think we the only tribute that we can give him if we can make this i know uh, happening a successful experiment if we can uh, start uh, having this experiment at some time that will be the biggest tribute to so that's it. okay thank you sanjeev maybe you should uh, yeah uh, uh, indumati do you want to say something yeah maybe just a couple of things yeah uh, well uh, first is uh, i think everyone has said this before i simply add to it uh, i felt also that uh, i can't remember quite when i first met sandeep but he was so unassuming about his work uh, I can't remember the number of times we would discuss something in a conference, you know, some new work that had been uh, presented in uh, in a talk, and then Sandeep would say, "I wrote a paper about this, maybe you know, fifteen or twenty years ago." You know, and it is just remarkable the kind of the sheer uh, ideas that he had, and you know, he was first with them. And as I said, so unassuming. I, I just uh, really love that about him. Uh, well, what what else to say? I, I also want to say another thing. I think. most of it has been said by other people i don't want to repeat the same thing again i just want to mention that uh, it's been very nice seeing uh, many friends here who i haven't seen for a long time uh, i would especially like to mention uh, anjan whom i have not seen in decades i think uh, very happy to see you anjan as uh, 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 zaxis who also I, i think i spoke to you on the phone and uh, didn't meet you in person and i think rohini as well who i have not seen in a long time and many others as well uh, i maybe this occasion uh, enabled me to meet or see more of you i think uh, john learned also whom i have not seen i think maybe in 20 years as well uh, that's that's all i want to say thank you indumati uh, murti do you want to say something i think whatever uh, i i wanted to say has been said by everyone and uh, you know so many people have come together and 
that speaks of the man uh, sandeep pakwasa and i'm really uh, i'm so uh, you know, taken by his support to ino and all the time uh, he was asking about it and when the, he had to do something he would come forward and do it getting this international support etc etc so there are a lot of things we need to be thankful to him and uh, it's so nice to see that so many people have come together and many people that i haven't met in a long time i'm glad to see them and this is typical of pakwasa he was the one who would bring people together and uh, thank you okay thank you murthy uh, i think we are about maybe a half an hour over time that we had planned but in any case i think we would uh, if haide would like to say something uh, it would be nice i mean would uh, haide Uh, like to say something hello oh who who shared this uh honors and distinctions okay yeah actually uh, this is uh, uh shared by <laughs> just a, just, uh, just give me a second Ah, Pakwasa's name is there. Yeah, nineteen fifty-seven. Okay. So, Sony, Sony Nakal. Uh, okay. He has actually sent these pictures and he asked us to share. He's okay. BSc nineteen fifty-five and uh, uh, this is uh, also I think MSc is also there. BSc nineteen fifty-five. Okay, Pakwasa. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. And uh, this is his uh, MSc. Okay. Uh, Role of honor. Yeah, nineteen fifty-seven. Is there who sent the slide? Let him speak a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to say a few words? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Yes, yeah, so it will be my great privilege to say something about him. Actually, uh, I read uh, many things about him when I was doing my PhD. I, I'm uh, in in presence of few people. I'm very junior. I can say I'm very new to the subject. but fortunately i can say that i am also from this university the ms university of baroda uh, very long back i came to know about him and uh, uh, recently i found his name on this on the great wall uh, university wall so that is why i thought that i should share with you people also it's my great privilege i will definitely ask my head of the department to contact uh, uh, um, data sir and you people also so definitely Thank you very much, Sunil Nakul. Thank you, sir. Thank you uh, very much, sir. Haide, uh, uh, would you like to say something? Sorry, sir. Well, the only thing I would like to say is I want to thank you all. It was very nice hearing how how much everybody appreciated him. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. so on this uh, note uh, uh, i mean unless uh, I, i think we should uh, uh, end this uh, very nice session that we had uh, remembering sandeep uh, uh, hi thank you very much for uh, being here and uh, 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 you heard all the you know uh, the memories uh, that were there and uh, thank i think i would like to also thank all of you uh, the people who spoke the people who heard and who are in the you know in the uh, zoom meeting uh, uh, vivek can i say something vivek who who is that uh, gautam gautam okay yeah so you want to have uh, the last word yeah sure <laughs> no 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 sure. no 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 it's it's a request to you yeah maybe, uh, maybe you can collect all the photographs that you that people flash oh oh that's something and, yeah that satyanarayana does usually uh, okay. but i don't know whether satya are you there yeah i did that would you like to, uh, us all to put on our uh, cameras and then you want to take a uh, screen yeah, yeah. shot or something yes that yeah yeah that that's I a good know, idea yes i think what i, I forgot no uh, no gautam uh, was asking uh, different he was also oh, saying oh, the oh, other uh, what was that sandeep's photo okay. uh, well i mean i meant uh, uh, i mean okay. some many okay. of us you know flash some sure. photos of sandeep yeah. yeah i mean maybe you can uh, you know put all of them, them together collect, yeah sure collect sure. them together yeah sure and keep it somewhere that we can yeah, access yeah yeah sure Yeah, they will be there in the. I'll yeah. I'll send you all the uh, links to where this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, okay. of course, the video is also going to be available right away on the, on the YouTube. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, 
Uh, so let us, uh, if, if, if everybody finished, just before we leave, uh, uh, we will also take a group photograph. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. I think many people have left, unfortunately. Yeah, I see yeah, that the number of participants has gone down, but it's okay. okay. I guess we can't wait. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, whoever is there. Okay, so can we uh, do it right away? Murthy, do you have a camera on? Just one piece of information for everyone. Uh, yes. The memorial site at the University of Hawaii uh, website, and you can uh, write a few yes. lines. Submit a photo if you would like. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just Anjan, Anjan, are you still there? Anjan Joshipura? Or maybe yes, I'm there. there. Yeah, could you put on your video? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Hi, Anjan. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, there you are. Let me take the. It's coming, no? Yeah, yeah. Anjan, uh, it's still coming. Hey, Anjan... Satya, your photo is not there. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, okay. there you go. Now it okay. is there. Yes. Yeah. And um, Saurav Ray, Patrick, Patrick, can you put on your camera as well? Yeah, coming up, coming Saurav Ray. Uh, yeah. Uh, Patrick, you have to move. I think Arjun Giri also. You have to move your. Arjun Giri, yeah. Arjun Giri is Anjan also Giri. not there. Uh, Sonal Patel. Okay, and you have to give me two minutes. So please don't put off quickly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So one uh, I click just now. Okay. And let me... Uh, Namit, yeah. Anjan is somehow not there. Okay. As Indu pointed out, I mean, it's a great opportunity also. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, you know, I mean, to see all of us after a long time, I would not have recognized Murthy. I don't know whether Murthy would have recognized me. At least you're, I would not have recognized Murthy. I mean, <laughs> if I would have seen him in the street. That is why it's convenient that the names are written below. You yeah. See? Yeah. 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 Yes, I did not recognize your name, by the way, Gautam. No, I mean, the, my in my laptop, I mean, there is no <laughs> word, so I used my office laptop. No, <laughs> I used the information which I'm Amol sorry. gave me to change from my wife's name to my name. Uh, yeah. yes. But anyway, sorry, I don't have too late. Yes. doesn't matter. Okay. Well, probably many people thought you were Chaya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've done that. So now... Okay. Yeah, it's very nice that everybody... Yeah. Put, you know, normally, it doesn't happen. Uh, you have to keep on pleading and finally... Yeah. Did. But I'm happy everybody did that. Almost. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. And uh, I think we share this common uh, memories of uh, Sandeep. Uh, actually, I miss uh, uh, going to Hawaii. Uh, but anyway, I will probably meet Haide when I next come to Hawaii. I'm a retired guy and a free bird. <laughs> as long as my visa lasts, I think I would like to come to Hawaii sometime. John? Hi, Haide. I'd like to send you my best wishes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so, to Vivek and Satya for putting this together. Yeah, mainly you. Satya, yeah. right? Murthy. <laughs> Satya Murthy. is the main guy. Murthy, no, no, no. Satya Murthy, Satya. Murthy was the originator. He was Murthy. the. Thank you all. Thank you all who did this. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you very you much. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you very Have much. Have a good uh, day or night, as the thank case you. may be, depending on your time zone. Thank you. Yeah, thank best wishes, Heidi. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you, thank you Heidi. Bye, Heidi. And bye, John. Bye, John. Bye, John. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Munti. Bye, Munti. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Zerexus. Bye. Hindu, Bye. I think we are actually Zerxus. met in uh, math science. Uh -huh. A couple of Met years ago. Yeah. Very briefly. I... Very briefly. <laughs> yeah, Hindu yeah. has left, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. she has left, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. 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 As a host, I think I'll leave last. <laughs> Bye, Gautam. Bye. Yeah, I'm trying to. I mean, there is something. Leave. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks, okay. Satya. Okay, sir. Bye, sir. Yeah. Bye, sir.